We are back from last time where they had gone deep down inside this tower only to uh, be struck by this silver thread that came escaping from a cage that Hyrax broke open with a dart. And immediately upon being hit by this thread, everything flashed and went black. And I need everyone, please, to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, woof. Oh, straight into it. Wonderful. It's a, it's a good <laughs> sign. Let me check something real quick. Oh, yeah. I would have proficiency in wisdom saving throws if only we had rested at some point. <laughs> no. Because I get that at seventh level. <laughs> no. Yeah, I thought about going, well, should they maybe fall unconscious, but then would it really be a long rest? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. 12. All right. Uh, 11. All right. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Spells or magical effects? Uh, yes. One more roll of the dice. <laughs> Which makes it 15 instead okay. of Okay. All right. I'm going to roll for Ptolemaeus. But he's, uh... All right. And Vara. 11. This works out really well because I rolled really poorly for Ptolemaeus. <laughs> so he's the only one who doesn't wake up out of the group. Isn't that just amazing? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I have put you on the map. You awaken to find yourself in a different location than you remember being just a few moments before. You couldn't have been asleep because you're, you're standing up. You're not quite sure where you are, and you, you definitely don't know how you got here to this place, but it is eerily quiet here. The air smells stale. As you look around, You can see that the you're in some kind of a carved stone rooms. You can see through some holes in the stones that are obviously there to provide some sort of visibility in that you are in separate rooms. There's a large metallic looking door in the center of the wall. It's kind of got a an odd purplish metallic sheen to it. Above the door, you see a glowing pink orb. It slowly gets brighter, then dims. Brighter and dims. Looking around, you see who's awake, and you see Ptolemaeus or at least Adrastos and Hyrax do, in the corner of the room. And Ptolemaeus's eyes match the glowing pink of the orb above the door. Well, Adrastos is going to try and open the door. All right. Then he's not going to do it softly. All right. Uh, you do have all of your gear with you, just to be clear. Uh, it's okay. I'm just going to try to one-armed wrench it open. All right. Uh, please give me a uh, strength check. Uh, or athletics. Do it as athletics is better. I'll do athletics. Oh, well... Oh, okay, that's not bad. 16. You pull against the door, and the door doesn't budge. You do note, however, some of the stone that is surrounding the door kind of shifts a little bit. And then you begin to hear the sound of footsteps approaching down the long hallway that goes off to the east. Okay, I'll uh, move to stand in front of Ptolemaeus, kind of 
spear and shield just to kind of since he's not conscious just to kind of keep him blocked does everyone hear it or is it just me oh i'm sure everyone hears it okay Especially um, hyrax. Just, he probably heard it first yeah <laughs> i'll just i'll just give hyrax the the be ready look he will nod an acknowledgement you're Take able to see it oh sorry i'm sorry go ahead go ahead Bora. I just, Vara just kind of, she'll just be standing there. And I think she's actually just going to sit down in the room, kind of looking around, and, and she'll look to Tikros and say, I'm really tired of getting transported to random places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> and I'll sit down beside you and just awesome. hang out. And Ian makes week. a note, more transportation. <laughs> and... You see, walking down the hall, Prime. Hmm. His eyes are glowing pink. Behind him are two people in dark robes. One of them is wearing a circlet that has a pink stone in the center of it that is slowly glowing and softening. When I see Prime, I'll kind of, I won't drop my guard, but I will lower it a little. Okay. So I'm here-ish. They reach the end of the, uh, they reach the end of the hallway, turn, and begin heading north down the hallway. Pay no attention to those of you in the rooms. Prime, wait! There is no response. You can see a little bit further down the room now that you're in the hall, now that your attention is drawn to it. And there is a door made of that same similar metal at the end of the hallway. They approach one of the... Uh, Robed figures moves forward and opens it, and the three of them step through, then close the door behind them. Well, I didn't have any luck with the door, but I should be able to shift these stones. Hyrax, can you give me a hand? Very well. Um, he'll head over and try to, oops. Not on top of him. Try to help him out. Get on my shoulders, Hyrax. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're attempting to attack the stone, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is that the way to put it? Uh, yeah. Can I just give him uh, advantage on the roll? Uh, that sounds good to me. All righty. Go, go, gadget, athletics. Or is this an attack? It's an attack. Okay. Go, go, gadget, attack roll. Um, oh, all right. I'm just putting the two of you in there as, uh, on this hammer stuff. Uh, ta -ta, 22. You hit. Uh, go ahead and give me a damage check. Okay. Seven. You hit, and a little bit of cracking occurs, and you watch as this crack slowly creeps its way up to where the orb is over the door. And it falls out and falls to the ground and shatters, and Ptolemaeus immediately collapses to the ground. Uh, Erebos' toe jam. <laughs> I, I don't want to curse on stream. <laughs> but that's not what that's not what Adrasto said. <clears throat> Fire truck! <laughs> and he will run over to Ptolemaeus. All right. Uh, yeah, I would. I would like to check over Ptolemaeus to see if he is okay. All right. Uh, give me a medicine check. Can I assist with that medicine check? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, that is going to be a fifteen. 
Uh, Ptolemaeus is no longer breathing. Oh, no. Oh. Um, I would like to use my last spell slot, my very last spell slot, to cast Cure Wounds, if I could. Okay. If he will actually, you know what, with, with that 15 minute, am I able to determine what is causing him to not breathe? If it is a physical wound or if it is magical. You do not see any major wounds on him. His eyes still have that pinkish glow to them, but they're now much more dulled than they were. And they're not pulsing along with the orb because the orb is now shattered on the floor. Hmm. The orb in the uh, other room, which is still vi it's visible from inside and outside, uh, above Vara and Tikaros's door, is still glowing in that normal light. However, um, mm, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what to do. Roll me an insight. Um, <laughs> now that is something I'm good at. I can't just um, while, give it away. But... While that's happening, Adrastos Knew it. is freaking out, and he's going to start throwing himself against the wall to try and smash through. I, okay. I almost called it beforehand, just because I knew that's how it always goes, but I was going to say, and watch me after saying that, roll a nat one. And sure <laughs> enough. <laughs> Damn. Well, in that case, you you have no idea what's going on. Uh, it does appear to be related to something to do with the orb that shattered. Granted, it, Nat 1 is still a 10 on Insight, but yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, you, you, you determine if it's related to orb, it probably is something magical to do with the orb. Um, mm -hmm. And also you saw Prime being led by someone wearing a circlet. That, that pink glow seems to be rather ubiquitous about things in here. Um, okay, uh, perhaps I will go and try and get someone who is more skilled with arcane things than I am. Yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm trying to smash the wall now, because I'm like, oh, help, help! <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I make an arcana check on the glowy orb above the door? Uh, yes, you may. And her familiar assist? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's see. Also, not one. Sweet. We are trapped oh. here forever. Woo! <laughs> I can tell how this session is going to go. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I, I got just Ptolemaeus. Sorry, what did I miss? You're uh, unconscious and dead. We're we're stupid, <laughs> dude. That's what you missed. Oh, good. We got we got stuck in these little rooms, and we said, "I, don't, I guess we'll die here. <laughs> I guess this is fine." Yep, this is how it ends. Yeah. All my efforts for TPK, and all I had to do was lock you in rooms and put little pink orbs <laughs> above the doors. Right. Great. <laughs> hey, when awesome. it works, it works. Yes, and Ptolemaeus at the moment, and I had to roll for you, so unfortunately, you had to go with my poor roll. You are currently unconscious uh, on the floor, not breathing. And they're trying oh, to figure okay, out what cool. to do. So, perfect, perfect. Um, somebody said they were going to look around, or something. I I, I was going to look for I was going to look for someone who's better with arcane things than I am, uh, to and, see if they could fix Ptolemaeus. And I am smashing the wall and yelling for Prime to come back. And I'm saying, Prime, Prime, your brother's not breathing. We need you. Just hitting the walls with everything I have. Uh, give me an athletics said, check. Yes, okay. Hyrax. You said there is another orb that's still glowing, right? That is above the door in Tikaros and Vara's cell. Yep, the one that okay. I uh, looked at and said, hmm. So hmm. I can't do that's anything. A, that's an orb. <laughs> uh, Can I ten. maybe... Oh, no, sorry. Oh, well. No, it's okay. I was just giving my score 10. Okay, thank you. Yes, Kirk. Can I, can I cast my mage hand? And see if it. I can send it up to the orb and try to get it out of the wall where it is and bring it okay. down to Vara. Very interesting idea. Okay. So uh, once it gets up there, uh, give me a strength check. Okay. 
with and, my uh, strength? But, nope, we're going to do it with your strength, but with disadvantage because it is Mage Hand. Okay. That is. Oh, 12 with disadvantage. All right. Uh, it takes a moment, but these things are there. It's like they were stuck in and then maybe just some loose sand or something stuck around it for mortar to hold it in place. They're not really embedded very strongly, but you are able to pull it loose and bring oh. it down. And it's right. fairly lightweight, so the hand has no problem. What should we do? Should I send it through and put it on Tolly's body or something? I don't know. Um, well, we'd have to be able to get out of the room first, right? Um, I'll go and try the door. There are holes, and the door is a barred door, so I will say there's enough room to get the orb through it if you want to send it through with the hand. Oh, sweet. I do that. I'll just send the hand through to where Adrastos and Hyrax are in the room. So Hyrax just is... Go. As you're looking around, Hyrax, you see as this orb comes floating in in this spectral hand. Uh, okay, uh, so if the orb has floated into the room on this spectral hand, can I take Ptolemaeus's body over to it and see if I can just... It's <laughs> just going to drag see him he, over? See if he connects to its, uh, to its uh, Bluetooth connection. It's, uh... yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden you hear this... <laughs> doo -doo -doo. Wireless charging. <laughs> uh -huh. And the glow in his eyes does begin to steady and match the pulse of it. But Adrastos, you've been slamming into the wall all this time. And while it has been making some cracks and stuff in the wall, um, it's also set things loose in the roof, in the ceiling, and things begin to fall. And in particular, you hear something in this far corner where this stack of rocks is falls, and you hear this peculiar ping noise, not the sound of stone falling on stone, but stone falling on some kind of metal. And it's it's not a quiet noise. It rings out quite loudly, enough to get your attention, aside from the fact the ceiling's falling in. Well, I think I'm pretty <laughs> focused. On, like, I'll hear that, and I'll clock it, but I'm focused on Ptolemaeus right now. All right. Well, as mentioned, Ptolemaeus's eyes are beginning to focus, and he begins to breathe again. One other thing you note, now that things are calmed down a little bit and you're, you're paying attention to him, his hair is jet black. Oh. Hmm. It's not sort of that uh, night sky looking. Absolutely jet black. Appearance. Hmm. Am I up? Like, uh, not as of sort yet. Of? Uh, okay. Actually, I will give you the opportunity. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Maybe you'll roll better than I did. Okay. Was it a is it a high bar to beat or is it low bar to beat for for your to beat your roll? Uh, it would be a pretty low bar to beat. <laughs> uh, I. Okay. Uh, I mean that's a ten. <laughs> that's good enough. As they are messing around, jostling you. Slowly, you blink your eyes, and you awaken to see Hyrax and Adrastos leaning over you, and this spectral hand holding this pink orb that is slowly dimming and brightening. What? What did I miss? <sighs> I was worried you were dead, or had fallen into another coma. Well... Both of them don't sound very good, but, but what, what happened? It happened when Adrastos smashed that other orb. After, there are broken um, pieces on the ground. I was trying to get us out and the orb fell and you stopped breathing. We were transported here after that light touched our chest. Can I see anything in the room right now? It's fairly li decently lit in here, so dark vision not required. Uh, as mentioned, it's stone walls. Looks like it was carved out. There's a large pile of rubble in the uh, one corner behind you, and the doors are covered with these metal barred doors that are kind of a purplish metallic sheen to them. Not a metal you're used to. 
And you said the the other orb. There there's an orb in the room right now with a spectral hand, but there's the other orbs just on the ground. Shattered. It's shattered on the ground. Yeah. By the way, Twitch chat says they cannot see our map. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, there's I a map because I can't see a map. Oh, there. I go. am now so it's... sorry about that. <laughs> <clears throat> Bad DM. I'll go sit in the corner now. Uh, oh, I need to put I... the spectral hand down real quick because my spell's going to end and I don't want it to shatter. <laughs> so you see the hand go quietly to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I could see through the bars and then on the other side of the bars is, is um, Vara and, and Tikros, yeah, right? They're in, a, they're in guess... another room, yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay, so... Kind of collecting all of my thoughts. There's there was an orb, one one orb in on each room, and the one here was shattered. Okay, what about this this rubble? And I I kind of just take some time to look through the rubble and see if there's anything of note in there. You notice just protruding from the rubble, uh, some of the ceiling had fallen down and hit and kind of moved stuff around. You see a plate of metal. It's fairly good size, maybe about eight inches wide and a little over a foot long. That's there. Uh, it looks like to be something crafted. Uh, am I able to pull it out, or you can I, give it a like, try? Uh, give okay, me an I'll, athletics I'll, check. I'll I'll kind of give it a small little tug, and it, once knowing that I need to have a uh, little bit more strength to give, I'll just. Just look over and be like, Adrastos, could you help give me a hand with this? And I'll actually give him advantage, if that yes, is possible. Certainly. Right. Let me see what I can do with that. Give it the old one, two. Oh, well. It would have been funny if I rolled a one and a two. I didn't. I did roll a two. But because I have advantage, I rolled a 15, which is 22. Right. <laughs> As you pull on this, the rock shift a little bit. You get a grip on it. You're able to tell it. It appears to be some kind of a hammer, but it is held fast. And you begin to hear noise as the, the rubble underneath begins to shift a little bit. Uh, immediately as that happens, I'm going to go over to the orb that's like on the ground now and mage hand it back to the other room. I was just like, just keep it safe over there. There's something, in, there's sh something shifting in here. Okay. And yeah, I will just give it back to him. All right. Uh, Extended that... hibernation disabled. Internal systems engaged. Optics activated. Functionality restored. Designate port forged. Aegis prototype one line. Voice box. Activating. John got her. <laughs> oh, well, that was cool. what's happening? <laughs> the rubble begins to move, and a figure emerges. At that moment, a large metal man, pieces of metal shifting into position, a shield fixed on his arm, and the other holding a massive war hammer, stands in front of you, six foot eight looks at you. Why would you try to take my hammer? That's not kind. It was an accident, sir. I wasn't aware that it was in use. And I'll put my shield on my back and extend a hand. Adrastos of the Dawnbringer. I will shift. I will shift my warhammer from one hand to the other and extend a hand towards you, though not taking it to clasp or to enclose. Warforged Aegis Prototype. Would Aegis be an alright thing to call you? Negative. Designate Aegis. Known. Very well. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> uh, hi, Rex. Ptolemaeus. What experiment are you? Oh, no. <laughs> I... Uh, no. Experiment. I don't believe I am an experiment. You don't know which house created you. I'm um, not Warforged, nor am I Anvil Rot. None of us are. I'm I sorry. I did not how... claim that as your designation, but every house is responsible for various experiments. I will let Ptolemaeus speak. <laughs> I'm stunned. I will extend a hand. I will extend a hand and like kind of with one finger kind of look like I'm reaching for your mane. <laughs> okay. Which I don't have. By it's, the way. He's, sh oh, he's pretty shaved down. Shaved. Yeah. He's oh, you're yeah. shaved. Oh, yes, because he uh, he has suffered an, a dishonor. So he shaved his mane. OK, I did not have your your art there. <laughs> I was going by what you had. <laughs> That's OK. I, I would I would still be extending the finger kind of like looking like I'm coming towards you to kind of probe out what you are. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what designation would you think that we should call you by then? I am a prototype. I do not have a proper designation. How long have you been here? And I'll think over the amount of years. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Years. It's not long, as long as I expected. Where were you before this being in this cell? Uh, and I'll kind of look back towards the, the bars this cell i powered down i was moved i've called this place home i i will looking at the rocks i did not have time to tidy i'm sorry so no need for apologies. Yeah. No, That's there quite is. Quite all right. And with my foot, I'll start kicking some of the rubble like behind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, as he's doing that, can I can I check the ceiling and see if the if it's all just from the ceiling? If there's any sort of like uh cracks that that are visible now? It's part of it is definitely ceiling and wall cave in. Uh, but also it looks like just any crap from anywhere else because there's a mix of stone here that does not match the walls. It's just been shoved in this room. <clears throat> While you're looking around. What are your designations? You could call me Ptolemaeus. And that one's Hyrax. Yes. We still have two other friends in the other cell as well. Vara and Tikaros. Let's get your friends. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Do you have the means to get us out of here? Is something holding you back? The gate. I was unable to open the door. Looking at the gate, uh, how much damage have they done to it? Uh, they've done no damage to the door, but they have damaged the wall quite a bit. Although, uh, it appears to be very integral with the ceiling, and any more damage to the wall may bring down the ceiling as well. This is b steel. Very rare. This was not here when I powered down. Is there... do you have any way of getting through it? What kind of lock is on this door? Is there no... Uh... There is a door on it. It is integral to the actual stone. Um, 
probably could be picked if someone had the right tools and abilities. It looks like someone with skill in forgery and or bad things, like stealing, could get through this door. <laughs> Saying that and then just, I'll raise an eyebrow and I'll just be like, Tikros Farag, are you, are you hearing any of this? I love uh, this. And then cut scene over and Tikros has got her little thieves tools out <laughs> and you can see her like... <laughs> Working on the door. <laughs> Give me a uh, a dexterity check. Yes. Yeah, um, kind of thought you all just went insane and started hallucinating something. Is there a person that we should be concerned about? It seems friendly enough. You you are friendly, right? A prototype. Uh, yes. I am not. I am not an it, and I am friendly. He I don't wish friendly. you harm. He seems de definitely friendly. What did you call me? Looking at uh, Hyrax. Uh, he, he, Hyrax was trying to remember uh, the word prototype and I ended up saying something like protos. <laughs> protos. Proto. I will be Proto. Proto. Pleasure to meet you, Proto. Same. And I extend the hand again. <laughs> and he's going to get the Strength and Honor Beastmaster clasp on his wrist. Thank you. <laughs> Tigros, how did the roll go? 16. You unlock the door. You hear as it click. Let's check it out, Farag. Also, Proto would notice, I don't know if this information trickled down, Proto would notice that this Leonin, in addition to having a shaven mane, has one arm. The other arm that is holding his shield on is a javelin tied to the stump of his arm. Noted. Acknowledged. <laughs> not even phasing him. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> uh, can I hear the door opening on the other side? If they're opening it, I will say, yes, you absolutely can hear it. As in fun, I will look at Hyrax and go. Roto. 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 I like it. You've never had a name before, have you? Designations were never assigned before my hibernation. My kind get our names from the people around us. But who it is then? It's a good name. Has a good ring to it. Fine. <laughs> Barbara like that rock off my head. <laughs> Barbara will look to Tikaros um, and just go, oh no, they've given it a name. Um, and if I can, uh, I can <laughs> they've help named her it. Now they want to keep it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if I can yep. help her lockpick in some way, if I could provide help, that would be great. <laughs> Oh, well, the door the door lock is picked, so it's just a matter of do you want to open the door. Our our party just became yeah. the epitome of that meme. Dad doesn't want a pet. Dad and the pet. Uh-huh. It's just <laughs> us hugging Proto. <laughs> uh, you are able to slide the door open. Awesome. Let's go. Great, you got the door open. Um try try picking this one as well. Oh, you have a friend with malintent. Yes. Hi, I'm Tikaros. Less malintent since our, our intent is to get out of here anyways. Looking at her through the bars. Will you be completing your shape? Huh? What? I've never seen one of your kind stop mid-change. Mid you don't like my cute Seda? Appearance? I think he's talking about your coloration. Oh, White my hair's side. different. Yeah, 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 my hair's different. Like, here's the light side, here's the dark side. Uh, I will frowl and 
it he is humanoid enough that you can tell there is confusion. In what book is the satyr you modeled your appearance after? I like stories. Oh. Proto. Well, I'll look for that for you. And she'll just get very confused as well and just start working on the lock. Proto, she, she's not a shape changer. That is, that is who, what she is. A satyr. Where are we? You are in Sharn. Where are you from? This isn't Theros. Is it not? I don't understand. What? No, I've never heard of a place like this in Theros. The am oh. I do need to clarify with you? Mm -hmm. Am I aware of this statement? Um, I think you know enough from your learning, you might be familiar with a name of Theros and the fact that it is somewhere else. There is no Theros nearby. Or on this pole. Ah, you are from, a, from the plane of Theros. Yes, we were transported in some way by a chaotic energy or how did he describe it mm. a, a, a silver string passed through us all our clan has legends of transport like this but what what plane is this how do we return there, there are, are many, many questions, questions. Um, yeah. you are on the, the plane, plane of Eberron? Eberron? I, I am unaware, unaware of the technology, technology to get, get you home. home. I, I am aware of the technology. technology. I am unaware of how to operate it. Or, or who holds it. it. Or, or where it is. Hmm. Or who to ask. That's, That's and how great. to ask. That's great. Those are Definitely conundrums that we're going to have to face, but... Indeed. Out of these cells first. One step at a time. Icarus, uh, let's see how that second uh, lockpick was going. Oof, that's only a seven. I'm afraid you oh, are wait, having no, difficulty. Oh, ten. Ten, <laughs> sorry, ten. Well, Math. that's a wee bit of a difference, then. <laughs> <laughs> as you are able to pick the lock. I guess you know what the DC is now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you are able to pick that lock and slide the door open. I, as that door is opening, the first thing I want to do is uh, kind of the way I've always used my Eldritch Blast, I want to active, like, try to gather the power for an Eldritch Blast, but not throw it out. Am I able to do so? Interesting. What is the effect of this you're trying to achieve? Uh, understanding that I am no longer on the plane of Theros, I want to see if the, the godly powers that I am, quote-unquote, borrowing from Crufix still reside in my body. Hmm. I think it's fair. Uh, sure. Um, and since it's a cantrip, no problem. You can do that. Okay. And yes, it you, it you do. It it doesn't feel any different to you. Okay. So we're still somehow linked to Theros, regardless of of where we are. And I kind of. The portals are the way. between the planes are always open. It's just a matter of how to navigate them, when, why. And if you're not supposed to, not getting caught. But you have a friend that's good at bad. 
Um, I mean, we've, we're an eclectic group, so we're probably all good at some sort of bad somewhere. Regardless, I just wanted to make sure that we still had connection to our gods. Although, I'm not so sure if that is a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. I'm carrying the orb in and going, shall I smash this? Should we keep this? What does this do, Proto? Do you know? So looking at it, I'll take it into my hand. This looks like dragon shard. I don't know how to use it. What does dragon shard usually do? Oh, it's used in experiments. Great. We could find an alchemist. We should keep it then. If the other one managed to take the life out of me for a little bit, and this one managed to bring me back. There might be some use to it. As for... Proto holds this thing and is examining it, it suddenly begins to brighten, and this pattern is drawn on the walls and in the air around you. And I need a wisdom saving throw from everyone, please. Oh, boy. Oh. Come on. Just let me level up, man. I'm about to be proficient in them. <laughs> you know, that's the best that's the best reason to want to level up, I'll be honest. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, I was man. scared. Oh, I rolled a two and a three with that's my a, spells advantage. As a oh, 13, no. if the DC is 15, I'm gonna throw something. Natural 20, which with my hey. incredible proficiency is 20. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 19. Okay. Mine was an 18 plus 7, so 25. All right. Ooh, and Proto. Vara, how, how are you, Vara? Muted. <laughs> She's the strong, Hello. silent type. <laughs> I sure am, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean... Sorry, what was the check again? Uh, wisdom. Is that crazy. Wisdom, wisdom saving throw. Right? Great. Okay. Gosh, my die keeps like tilting, like it's the digital dice, and it keeps like tilting over onto oh, yeah. a good to a bad. <laughs> it's a twelve. It's pretty bad when your digital dice get cocked against the edge of the I screen. Know, I know. I was like, what the? F <laughs> uh, it was a twelve. Uh, okay. So. Um, Vara and Tikaros suddenly just stop talking and moving, and their eyes begin to glow pink. Ooh. This stuff might might be a little bit more trouble than than it's worth, and I'll I'll grab onto I'll 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 see if I can grab the uh the dragon shard. Proto, can I see this real quick? Yes, of course. And as I hand it to you, all you hear me saying is, Proto, can I have this from you for a moment? And then looking at Hyrex, Proto. Um, and then uh, at the Leonin, I'm just repeating all the things you're saying. And as I'm saying it, my, my voice, voice slowly so starts to change eventually until this is his voice. You are a marvelous creature, Proto, I must say. I'll... I'm a living robot. I don't know what. But I'm is. free. You're not. An I'm none of your property. Or not. No, I would never claim for you to be so. Perhaps it is. He is something similar to an anvil rod. Don't think so. Anvil rods don't have. He is exhibiting signs of having a soul. He has choice. He exhibited confusion. But 
before any of that, uh, I will. I am confused why you are not doing anything with the rock. I'm look. I was like, <laughs> look. I'll, I'll I'll kind of look at it, and uh, is there anything? I will try. Uh... I'm going to use uh, uh, one of my spell slants. Is it possible for me to just kind of throw a cure wounds into the rock and see, like, try to use it to infuse any sort of magic into the rock and see if, if or the, uh, the dragon shard to see if anything happens, see if I can get it glowing again. Interesting. So it, it, is, it is glowing, but again, there was that pattern in the air. And then uh, your two cellmates uh, are apparently um, under its power. Is the pattern still is the pattern still on in in, in the air or the is pattern it just kind of once once their eyes begin to glow, the pattern begins to fade. At least for those of you who pass the saving throw. Okay. Uh. Yeah, so uh, that I'll continue my course of action to see if I can I can either get the pattern back or or something. To... Interesting. Uh, give me an Arcana check. Okay. And it is going to cost you your spell slot. But... Perfect. That's fine. Uh, that is a nineteen. You put this in there and it begins to glow and the color begins to to kind of muddle from pink and it begins to cascade into these other colors and begins to sparkle in your hand. And you almost get that vision of that constellation that used to be the pattern of your hair just before it shatters. I have no idea how any of this works. Uh, Meanwhile, I'll... Ara and Tikaros, uh, your eyes stop glowing, and you are back. Oh, nice. Okay. Ugh. What does it feel like? Like, yeah. can you feel that you're being, like, is it a dip of consciousness or what? It's like it's about? like you're there, but it's it's you felt as though you were waiting for something to tell you what to do. Like you had no desire, no will to do anything. You were waiting for instruction. Mm -hmm. it, uh, DM. Um, yes. I don't know if this changes anything for these individuals, but um, all these friendly people near me um, that are within 10 feet, which is at this point, I believe all of them, um, they get a plus four uh, bonus to all their saving throws. Oh, mm. We will. We shall note that for future reference. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Ooh. Looking at the numbers they rolled, I don't believe it would have helped. So. <laughs> Not that time. <laughs> For uh, Tikros, are you are you all right? Oh, I did not like that at all. I like my own choices. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was, uh, we're we're fine, but um, I felt like I could have been easily swayed or influenced, which um, as a captain, I really don't like. So, <laughs> would prefer to avoid that. What it, what what's causing it? Can we tell this and i'll just kind of show her the shards of all of the the the, dra the dragon shard that shards of dragon shard um that is in my hand now i poured some of my magic into it and it shattered and broke you out of that or mm. something like that friends if you stay close to me um, i can help protect you from its effects all right mm. Do you think it is still going to do us harm in this form? Broken? No, it is broken. Good. So we need to start looking for a way out, correct? There's some type of means or teleport or, or thing like that, um, but you don't know where or how or what. So for the first time, I'm going to look at Vara. Like, yeah, she's a fish lady. Oh, where, where are you, where are you Vara? Are you in the hallway? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've stepped out now. <laughs> All right. Ah, another experiment. Wonderful. 
Yes. Um, sure. We'll call it that. Um, Proto, I... Should we just pick a direction and start walking? We should. But right before then, I would want to let, let him know. Um, none of us are experiments. We're from a different world. A different plane, as you said. And we are different races that seems to not exist in your plane. Perhaps Negative. We're an experiment now that we're here. If someone catches you, you could be. Yeah, let's not do that. There's a noise down the hallway as a figure emerges from what appears to be a hole in the wall. Wearing a brown robe, they have one of those circlets around their head, but the stone in the center of it is not presently glowing. And they are walking your direction when they suddenly notice Vara standing in the hallway. Who? What are you doing out of your cell? Is our door open, DM? Uh, yes. I was having trouble with the map. I didn't want to mess with it, but it is open. <laughs> uh, D DM, I'm going to become very, er like, it's the wrong choice of words with this group. I'm going to become very erect. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, slowly walk out, turn towards the figure, and, go and say, designate Proto. I will take her to her cell. And I am trying to um, deceive him. <laughs> All right. Roll deception. Also, absolutely not Proto. Perfect choice of words. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 16 <laughs> plus 4. So it's a 20. 30, 20. He's going to. He's going to. Um, uh, which one are you? Okay, fine. Um, what happened to the... Find the orbs and replace them above the door. No wonder these people are awake. And as he begins to turn, you see, begin to see the pink globe on his head begin to uh, glow again, and he steps back into this hole in the wall. Uh, I will turn to Vara and, go, and just literally go like this. <laughs> well, well... Well done. Um, we should go that way. Yes, I think so. And so I will put my shield on my back, making myself wider, and step in front of uh, the opening for the door. So, and make a motion for all of you to come out and walk in front of me, so I can cover you from the back. Which way are you going, north or west? Uh, where did he pop out of? Can you ping the map, please? He popped out of this this hole. Yep. Oh, I should probably I... join the roll twenty. <laughs> probably that might. I was literally helps. clicking on the screen for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Way. I'll. Uh, go this way? I'll head out and kind of put my shield up to be a shield for the front, since Proto is going to be the shield for the back. So uh, you said he came out of here. Yeah. Yes. He, yeah, I think right his leg there, is where the blue showing. one is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go. I'm trying to. I'm token. trying to get the reveal to work, but you know me and reveal with real with roll twenty. So <laughs> basically, what you you couldn't really tell from there, but there's basically this alcove that he's in. Cam, okay, oh. I'm unable to move my uh, piece. Uh, drag your token. Uh, go into roll twenty and drag your token out then, because it just didn't attach you to it properly. There's two of you. Um, um. <laughs> I can also multiply. Very useful. <laughs> oh, this is very interesting. I can't control your token either. <laughs> <laughs> is so, it just part of the map now? I think it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I cannot. Is it on the wrong layer? Is that what's going on? No, wrong? I've tried it. I've tried it on every layer. <laughs> uh, How tall is awesome. Proto? Eight. Um, six eight. Okay, so in an in an effort to not ruin proto's wonderful deception job adrastus is going to come out see that he can still see over proto's head and just like shrink down so that he is covered because adrastus is seven six yeah that could uh <laughs> wait let me double check where yeah i think he's uh let me double check i believe he is six eight okay yeah, adrastus adrastus is a, a large boy so he's going yeah, he's, to make yeah, sure he's six eight he's going to shrink down so that proto's still hiding him thank you <laughs> But he's going to go into like uh, Testudo or Tetsudo. I don't know what it is. The Testudo. It's, it's Testudo. Yeah, okay, thank you. Turtle thing. And he's going to move forward like that. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'll I'll just kind of uh flank him on the side and just all right. Let's let's get going and uh, see what happens. See see what's over here. The door is locked. Oh damn! Let me take a look at that. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. I'll <laughs> shuffle up to the front and have a little crack with my thieves tools again on the lock. While she's doing that, I'm going to lean down uh, to the smaller ones. And at this point, I believe I will notice that uh, Adrastos is uh, cr crouching a bit and say, are any of you predisposed against the violence? <laughs> against? <laughs> no. Not if it's necessary. Adrastos is just laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if she can't open it, we could always um, persuade that kind man to allow us through the door. And as I'm saying that, I have the hammer and I'm going like this. <laughs> Persuade and kinder. Uh, great uses of the words, I believe. But let's see. Let's see for now. Let's as little resistance as possible until we figure out where we are. 30, 20. All right. You open the lock. You hear the click of the lock releasing. Are you going to slide the door open? I'm going to just shuffle back to my happy state at the back of the party. All right. Um, should I go first? You're all dressed funny. Hmm. Perhaps I can Seems cover smart. the rear if you go first. Let's try that. And, and then we can take some clothes from somewhere or someone on the way. Sure. You're, you're fitting in quite well. We like you. <laughs> I will go through um, the door. Again, I'm walking very rigid as if, uh, yeah. like, you know, purposefully I belong there. Do I, I know what kind of clothes we're supposed to be wearing? To the back of the group. I would say uh, no. I mean, e except from looking, uh, apparently robes. Robes may be the in thing, because that's what you've seen. Um, Should we be wearing something like that man that we saw? No. No, they do not dress like that outside of apparently this building. If we can get closer to a window, I might be able to determine where we are. Mm. I see. Let's do so. As the door slides open, you see a hallway that opens up into a large square room with what appears to be the remains of uh, ancient torture devices that are placed around the perimeter of the room. Interspersed between them are bed rolls, mostly bloody. You see a throne-like chair placed in the center of the room clearly newer than the uh, surroundings and seeming a little bit out of place. However, lounging atop the throne is a winged creature with a female form. There's one cultist, cultist, rogue person, cultist for lack of a better word, standing beside her. Um, there's several bloody implements on the floor as well. As you enter the room, The winged figure looks over at you and says, Oh, what have we here? My little birds seem to have escaped their nest. How unfortunate. Verstal will not be pleased. No matter. Let us put you back where you belong to await your fate with the Slithering Lord. Kind of straightens herself up in the seat. And then points in your direction. Sorry. She almost knocked my mic over. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Slithering Lord! Come here, Slithering Lord! Come here, the microphone, thank you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I don't, I don't like think we know the Slithering Lord was Vara's cat all along. <laughs> <laughs> there it is! Ah! <laughs> I, I am weirdly going to try... Uh, I'm going to try to uh, persuade her because it's not, it's not a lie. It's not deception. 
like apologies. I was supposed to take them to their cell after the last one broke. All right, let's see how that goes for you. Oh, I does a like 26 that. work? <laughs> I got a 19 plus seven for persuasion. Wow. <laughs> She's going to look at you and then look to the verse in the robe and. Who is this? And the person in the robe is going to go. How I will long respond. You... you put them in my room. Your room. Do you serve the serpent lord? I woke up here. Does that mean I serve the serpent lord? This is very confusing. I... I really feel like like we're supposed to like fight or something here now. This is very confusing to me. She'll turn to the figure standing beside her and go with them and escort them back to their cells. At that I will ask, shall I ensure his safety? Um of course. I will ensure that the right people are taken care of. And I will turn around very robotically and I will lightly put my uh, fingers and I'll kind of just like motion for them to start walking back. And then I, it, to Adrastos, I'll show you my hammer and squeeze on the handle. And then I'll stand sideways and after you, sir. Right. The figure is going to approach down here and wait for you all to go through the door. All right, I'm oh, waiting on the other side of the door, like just to piston and spear him when he walks through. Um, I will stand and wait and be like, after you, sir. Fine. And he will step through the doorway. Uh, once he steps through the door, I'm going to stab him. <laughs> Once he walks through the doorway, I will turn back around, bow, and say, apologies, mistress, and walk through the door and close it. <laughs> okay. And uh, I will uh, yeah. let him lead us a little further. Okay. I think Adrasto said he was going to stab him, so I'm excited if that was immediate as, or not, because i got to give him If I don't get any other, like, I thought that was the indication. If I don't get another indication from Proto, I'm waiting um, to attack. No, no, I, I've closed the door, and I just, I'm turning, and I'm just standing forward, like, waiting for him to okay. move. So, if you <laughs> take rooms, his just standing there. Yep. If, no, you're, he's... if you're looking at Proto, when he says, to your rooms, he just mouths. 10 feet. All right, so he's going to move backwards. <laughs> so um, I'll now move I, a little bit. Adrastos, I will say as uh, we move, as he moves that 10 feet right forward, you'll know it's time to spear him because my hammer is in my hands like this above his head. <laughs> okay. Um, so once he steps between right there, okay, I'm going to move forward and, uh, because he wasn't expecting it kind of just like, go like, I'm going to hit him with my shield for a fainting attack. Right. And I'm going to hit him in the head with my hammer. <laughs> okay. So I will expend my superiority die for that faint attack. Is it okay uh, if, as I see that they're both attacking, I'm just going to uh, prepare a prestidigitation because I'm pretty sure there's going to be blood splatter on me. I'm very close. <laughs> I'm going to assume a 25 hits. Uh, yes, that hits. Okay. Does a 21 hit? Uh, yes, it does. So from 14, me... 14 plus 7 for the... 
Okay, and I have uh, 18 total. <laughs> I'm getting my dial. As, as between the two of you, you hit him for the, for the equivalent of four times his hit points. <laughs> 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 Feel free to describe what happens to this poor individual, his robes, and Ptolemaeus' clothes. <laughs> Nothing happens to my clothes. I have prestidigitation ready. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it's easy to describe how many things he folds into. Yeah. Um, but because he gets as, yeah, go ahead. Spear to the gut, which will double him over, and then I'll just let Proto go from there. <laughs> and it's just one shot, just club. And I will turn with that to the most outstanding one of the group in terms of their looks for and go, a robe. It is now brown and darker brown reddish colored. I could clean this one up as well, and I'll just kind of <laughs> <laughs> press right. that one too. You now have. Is a he wearing a uh, band? <laughs> yes, yes, he was. <laughs> is there is there just one robe? Uh, that is all he was wearing. Yes, one robe. Yes. We there can get more. Two. There could be two, and I'll just kind of point over to the other side of the. I would like to, with my last spell slot, cast Disguise Self um, to, in order to appear like uh, one of these uh, cultists, as you said. All right. Very good. You see as he suddenly changes into a brown robe. Karina, I, you're still carrying your shield and spear, though. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose I am. Um. <clears throat> not sure what to do about those. I will Matters extend my hands. I will surrender my shield and my bundle of javelins and say, please take good care of them. Of course. And I will hold the javelins in a manner of a sentry, and the shield I'll place on my back as I have my own. I will retain my darts and try and hide them under the robe. Okay. It's a fairly flowy robe, so I think you'd be able to do that pretty easily. All right. So since we've already established violence, I suppose we should go collect the other robe. I... That's why I offered it. I normally wouldn't like to violence, but something told me that since you were all passing out in various measures, that violence was going to ensue. And also this uh, slithering lord or whatever, serpent lord that, that she was mentioning, it seems like we're definitely in a dungeon that we don't want to be in. Yes, we should not be here. The, let's hide the body into a cell and claim the I, other robe. I think we should just leave the body and move because they're going to find that very quickly. I'd agree. It's a naked, yeah. bloody body. I suppose. It's a crumpled, parts missing or mangled Whoa. naked body. <laughs> Who's Listen, that? I was trying to make it sound pretty. Who's getting the robe? Me? Yeah, you. It is already um, cleaned. I've, I've made sure of thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I, I think that friend Vera should go first. Okay. And then friend Hyrax? Hyrax? Hyrax. Yes. Hyrax should stand in front of me so that in a moment I can give him his armaments. Mm. This makes sense. Uh, hold on. Where? Wait. Where am I? You're standing where am in I front of the... myself. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be up here, or I was I was men mentioning to to come over here, and we're gonna try to. Oh, get we're gonna go that row. way. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if we can go that way first. All right. So. Oh. And the door right is here. closed. I'm just being lazy about actually moving it. So. Yeah. Shall we just line up the way we're uh, walking? Yep. 
I'm just waiting yeah. around the corner, right, right here. Well, we're going to walk by him. Yeah, just go we ahead and line. Really, we really don't you just need more robes. Just line up here how you're going to be, and that'll be good. How's that? We could walk out of here potentially. We have two cultists, I think. I'm sorry, I wasn't given a proper memory um, and grams. So we have two cultists and a slave mm -hmm. robot. We should. We may be able to walk out of here. Let's try it. We're going to try and. Once again, if if not if more robes, silence. did more someone robes. take the circlet? It was asked about, but I don't know if anyone took possession of it. Oh, I, I thought when he said it, he I didn't was, take it. I thought I thought when you said he was, it's like probably destroyed in the in the, <laughs> in the hammer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little bit more strength than uh, being destroyed in that. Attack. Oh, that's the oh, case. Okay. I would. Totally oh yeah, we totally have that. Then. <laughs> yeah, then yeah, we would take that for sure. Who who, who possesses it? Uh, I I would have grabbed it. I'll grab it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Farah, I don't know if they're going to probably, they're going to check, but would you want to wear this? Um, I suppose I could. I'm going to put it on, and if anything happens to me, uh, just just knock me out. <laughs> and Vara will place the circlet on her head. All right. Um, give it me an account. It because she has to fit it around the tentacle hair, but. <laughs> give me I a. I will totally be on standby. Give me an arcana check, please. Okay. Better than the last one, maybe? That's a nine? <laughs> that is better. <laughs> that is better. Uh, you put it on and situate it, but, you know, it's it's a little tight, maybe a little uncomfortable, but that's all you get from it at the moment. Perfect. I'm still conscious. I'm, I think I'm good to go for now. All right, let's move then. That's okay. I will lead the way then, I guess. Let's see. Um, Adrastos is also going to straighten up to his full height and drop all emotion from his face and hang his hand, his arms kind of limp at his side. Hmm. <laughs> and just try to walk like he is enraptured. All right. Are we still going this way or, or, or are we going, uh, yeah, I figure we're going, I figure we're west, going right? west, right? Yeah. Right now we're going west. We're going to go past the other potential cloak. The other potential cloak. I love it. Mm -hmm. They're just called cloaks now because they're, they're. That's all they are. <laughs> they're nothing but cloaks for us. They're not even people I mean, anymore. They're just coat hangers. We, I mean, we call people suits. So. Yeah. 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 Oh, Good no. point. I'll um, I'll lead the way, and then I'll I'll be the first one to kind of pass the corner to where he can see me. Okay. As you pass some of these other rooms, you can see into them, because again, they have holes in the walls and holes in the doors and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and illuminate the rest of the hallway just to make it nice and easy for me. While roll 20 is allowing me to make things visible, I'm going to make things visible. What a concept, right? All right. Um, as you approach, uh, I see Vara in the lead. Um, you see the person who's presumably the person who stepped out earlier is leaned back, sitting on a stool, arms crossed, eyes closed, and the uh, orb on the top of their head is pulsing in rhythm with the orbs above the doors. Hmm. Um, all right, well, so there's a person with a circlet here. He seems to be asleep, but I have a feeling that um, if we disturb it, it might open the cells, but it doesn't look like there's anyone in the cells. I'm going to say, yes, there are a few people and they're oh. all standing there. I just ran out of time to put tokens You're in. Good. I'm lazy. Okay. <laughs> they're standing there and they're all just kind of standing with their eyes glowing. Uh, they all look like just normal townsfolk. Their clothing is a little bit different uh, than what you would have seen uh, people in Theros wearing. They tend to be wearing more pants and suit coat type of outfits. But there's Friends. probably only five or six other people Friends. between the Friends. various cells. I have a good, bad idea. Okay. These people are currently enraptured. Yes. We could take their clothes. I like it. We do try I mean, to stay on but, the moral side. But we of give good. them we give them robes. Okay. Or we could free them. 
but then you won't have clothes. Well, can't they have our clothes? We'll just swap these. They could. They could. Yeah. Can I have a hat? Is anyone partial to the clothing they wear? Mine is quite literally a sheet and some <laughs> ropes from a boat. So I'll be good to get new ones when we get back. Uh, as long as we're quiet, we sh should be able to switch your clothes for more. We should keep the robes we have, though, to get out of here. But these clothes will help you fit in when we get outside. What what kind of clothes are they? If I if I'm looking into the cells immediately, um, as mentioned, they're like long coats generally, uh, shirts that kind of have a, a bit of a frill to them, and pants. Um, that's on some of the nicer ones. Uh, there are people that are just wearing a tunic and pants. Uh, there are male and female. There are females in dresses as well. So here's a here's a here's a little bit of a thought. There are no pants in Theros. Um. <laughs> I was about to say, you guys are all wearing things. I'd be like, there's plenty of dresses for you. I don't know any what any of those words mean. A dress, female attire that is skirted and moves with the wind. Hmm. Skirted, and, and that's supposed to be just fe for females. Obviously not, and he points at you. <laughs> we could all wear dresses. It, and I it will look will right be... at Adrastos and say, they do not have dresses in our size. I was going to say, I wanted to ask you, Proto, do they have gladiatorial combats here in wherever we are? Tam, unless you know something's crazy that I don't, the answer is no, right? <laughs> uh, only maybe in some of the, uh, in Corvair and Sharn, probably not, but maybe in some yeah. of the outlying places where uh, more of the uh, yeah. criminal gangs are, you might. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, there is not. Going to say finding clothing in my size may be difficult, but passing me off as some sort of fighting creature could be easier. Passing you there off are potentially sort of places. Passing you off as some sort of experiment apparently works here too. Indeed. Then I can play the part of an animal for now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry as well. You will not be free. As long as it gets my family free. And he will. Are they here? And I'll start to look in the cages. You've met them. And he um, kind of just broad gesture to the other members of the group. As he's starting to like take off his shield and um, his javelin. And he unties the javelin from his arm. And he's going to get, he's going to put the javelins in Hyrax's um, quiver which okay proto is holding and then he is going to hand proto his uh his shield he's going to say please care for this do we do we firmly believe that these robed people are bad people they were going to put you back in cells and i believe that woman was going to kill us Right. Um, I, I, I yes. think maybe, at least, especially since we have at least one of us in robes, myself. Um, I think Hyrax. We just, and Hyrax. Um, I think we continue on and not disturb these people. Perhaps free them, but I, I don't want to disrobe anyone or steal clothes, especially if they're already in prison to begin with. As I don't want to waste the time, actually. I'm sorry, I just didn't want any of you to be seen as an experiment. We should continue. Oh, no, that makes as, sense. Well, we can kill note, this fellow. He's asleep. As a note, my robes are illusory and temporary. Yes. If I could find something more permanent that I could fit over my breastplate, I would prefer that. Horrible gesture to the sleeping robed person. <laughs> stab? Stab him? Do a little stab. Um, Shall we? If you are incredibly comfortable with violence against an non-combatant, then I will leave it to you. As long um, as he's a bad person. 
As they're Has talking. This man... Go ahead. Has this man done something wrong? Worked for an evil prison, from what I can tell. Working doesn't mean that they're actually evil. There's other yeah. circumstances involved. I've they met look... a lot of men who are employed by someone evil and who are not evil themselves. Yeah, they look controlled, just like we have been. I suppose one robe is enough. I can always go ahead and speak with people or distract them. and Let's keep the killing to a minimum then, unless we're in actively engaged first. It's fine by me. We have all of our gear, right, Tam? Yes. Okay, um, so at this point, Adrastos has taken out his rope, and he has tied a collar around his neck, and he hands the other end of the rope to Hyrax. That is a great idea, Adrastos. Um, we should probably tie this one up, too. Not to, not to kill him or maim him, so that he doesn't actually attack us. At seeing the uh, leash, I will lower my head. Oh no, he—he's leashed himself. He's, but it was put into High Rex's yeah. hand, and that's the. Yeah. <clears throat> for me. I I don't think it will be necessary for you, Proto. You can pass uh, yourself off. I I've only been free for two years. If one of us needs to not be free i could not be free for you you are our guide in this world and you blend in better than i do it's all right i'm i trust these people um let's carry on if anyone else asks what house created him as an experiment what would be the likely answer to that it's been some time since i've been in the the world proper mm -hmm. um you could always go with uh my creators house caneth they would yes. believe that they're experimenting very well Thank not the right. most fitting house but close enough Adrasus is going to kind of like clench his hand so he can work himself up into just like a foam and just <sighs> and just Start making animal sounds and being creepy. <laughs> we should move with haste. There's no telling how long this cloak will sleep. Agreed. Let's continue. Lara will continue leading the way. I'll stop at the corner and let you reveal Tam. All right. Here's hoping. <gasps> Come on. Come on, roll 20. Da, 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 da. And, well, that's uh, not much to reveal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'll take what I can get, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shall someone try the door? I can if you wish, but it might look better with one of the cloaks going first. I'd be happy to try it. And I will go test the door. All right. This door is also locked. Um, it's locked. Um, I suppose we can pick it if we want, or we can turn and go the other direction. The other direction isn't the best idea right now. I don't sure. want to have to deal with that winged lady. Uh, Tigros. All right, Tigros, then. Okay. Could... I will move up to the door and try my skills at this one. While you're doing that, Tigros, Proto walks up behind you and is like leaning down and staring intently <laughs> at what you're doing. And then you just put it around this bit as she okay. notices you watching. And then just be careful. You can't be clumsy with this bit. And she rolls a great big 15. You hear as it goes click. <laughs> and, and I will look you right in the eye and go, am I a thief now? You're on your way. Oh, no. I've been told they're bad. I will do my best not to be bad. We should go try not to kill any more cloaks. And I will look at Vera. Do you want to go first? Yes. 
I can. Okay. I will step through the door. You open the door to a hallway, and you are immediately struck with this acrid, tangy stench that's just overpowering. You see torches hung down the wall, and in the distance you see as the light of the torches flickers across this giant pool of green liquid that runs the full width of the corridor ahead of you and about 20 feet in length. At the other end of the hall, you see a statue that kind of appears like a, a hobgoblin, which you'd be familiar with, wearing some kind of odd robes and a headdress. One arm appears to be stretching out like it would be reaching out towards you, but it's broken off just above the elbow. What is that smell? Uh, and I'll just kind of walk into the doorway. Proto, uh, do I, uh, before I say anything to Proto, uh, is there any vent or, or sort of kind of openings on either side that seems to indicate that this is no. on purpose? No, it's just stone wall carved out all the way down. And it's not like it's leaking out or anything. It's just kind of no. Like... It's it's like it's say a pool that is placed there. Proto, do you know what any of this is, or at least what this pool is? One this moment. Is foreign. I I am going to approach Farga and have my hands up. And go, excuse me. I don't mean to hurt. And I will rip a small piece of her robe off from the bottom. <laughs> And then drop it into the liquid. All right. Quite so, right. <laughs> as soon as it hits the liquid, it begins to smoke and disintegrate. Acid. Oof. It's acid. Hmm. Hmm. Familiar with, with something that's like that, although a different color. Looking at the walls, what's the condition of the walls on either side? Uh, it's hewn out of uh, either side of the hallway or the pool specifically, so I know what you're looking at. Um, but near the pool. Okay. Um, the walls um, to the side of the pool. It's definitely been the hewn stone all the way down. Uh, where the pool is, um, that's been dug out, and there's stone lining the sides of it. Uh, apparently, over time, the stone has etched out some minerals from the stone, so. It's it's very smooth, but porous material that you can tell that it's just been eating at it. So it's obviously been here for a while. Can anyone clear that distance? Oh, we can all just walk across it. <laughs> and um, Vara it's, will it's cast acid. Water Walk. Hmm. Oh, it is like, it's right above it, right? And it's like, you're not yeah. even actually having to step on. The spell grants the ability to move across any liquid, such as water, acid, mud, snow, as if it were a harmless, solid ground. Wow. That's good. Oh. I was, the uh, DM yeah. was oh. not expecting this. But he uh -huh. likes it. <laughs> but he likes it. <laughs> Totally trust the the you one. You keep throwing one. stuff at us, and Barlow's like, "Oh, I've got a spell for that." Thank you, Barlow. Yes, Very you cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. How Barla. many people can you cast that on? Ten. Wow. Oh, I got it after all of you almost drowned. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, I, went, uh, I remember that. Part. This spell. Uh, <laughs> that's a good, good times. <laughs> Before we cross that, I was. Did uh, my auditory was active? Did you all say you lost a friend here? Yes, there was another one of our membership. Uh, he was similar to you, but not the same. We called him Pride. Well, his name was Pride. Do you know where Designate Prime is? He went down the path in the direction of the larger devil woman. His eyes were glowing, weren't they? I think they he were. Was under control. 
I will lay my life down for your friend. Should we get your friend? Oh, um, I was hoping we would come across him. We have to rescue him. We do. We can't leave him here. He, he's the other way. Well, um, I'm sorry. Prime was with us he, at that time. Oh. Was I unconscious, sir? While you were asleep, Ptolemaeus, he walked by ourselves. Briefly. I, like Tikaros, hoped that we, perhaps he was making a circuit and we'd meet him on the way. We're going back the other way. Of course. All right, all right, there's a spell slot. <laughs> Mara puts <laughs> his mumble to herself. <laughs> <laughs> but should we just check? We don't know. We don't know if this goes around, do we? Let's, let's, Check the round the corner first, and then if oh. it, the water walk lasts for an hour, so if we decide we want to turn around and come back, we can and still utilize it. I would think, judging by the rooms that we've seen so far, there's no way that we won't meet up with Prime unless he is walking backwards and forwards, because all of the rooms we've been to have terminated. So I'm assuming this room is circular, and I think if we keep keep on our current course, we will find him again. And if we don't, as Vara said, we have water walk for some time. We can return if we need to. We We're should move with haste. I'm going to go and walk across and just peer around the corner. I would like to I will do, do the same. I will do similar, but walking across, I am uh, extremely nervous since I'm, you know, metal. <laughs> Uh, I kind right. of have to stick to Hyrax, so. <laughs> as Ptolemaeus, who was in the lead, as his foot touches the stone on the other side, you hear a noise from behind the statue, and this figure steps out. Eyeless sockets like? stare at you. And these ten as these tentacles begin to wave in the air around him. And he looks in your way and puts his hand out. And you hear these noise echo in your ears that says, roll initiative. Oh, nice. <laughs> Damn. I was like, is it, is it going to be yeah, another looks... wisdom save? Because I can, I'm just, <laughs> um. No, not that easy. <laughs> All right, I'll just. Looks kind of roll on roll 20. Big ol' seven. What is this uh, man? What is he? Man, that does not look like a man to me. I, I don't oh, God. <laughs> I zoomed in and immediately wanted to zoom out. <laughs> I got a two, guys. I got guys, your back. <laughs> I got a five, so I'm going to run Eight, to the restroom. Five. You know what? As someone who is usually at the bottom of the initiative order, I'm right there with you, man. You. It's like I got you guys. I'm in the back, all the way. <laughs> it's fine. I I rolled like a net one three times, like for the first three combats. Let's oh, don't yeah, so you did. I got I a minus one on my initiative. So, <laughs> oh my god, I have a plus five, but I rolled a natural five. I love it. Oh boy. Well, uh, Tikaros. Ooh. You are in the uh, front of the line for this one. Oh, what would you my like to word. do? Oh, it looks hostile. It looks evil. It, yeah. it definitely looks hostile, and it definitely looks... Uh, of, of all the things you've seen, it's probably one of the more evil that you've run into. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. My immediate reaction would be to hell fire at it, because that is my way. I hurl <laughs> a streak of fire at its face with a all 14 right. to hit. And that is a miss. Damn. Okay, okay. Uh, this could be tricky. And I'm just going to step. Can I step back? Is it squishy enough that I could work my way to the back? Uh, you, you can definitely to move there? past any, other, any of your friends. Yes. So I just. always the rule. So, okay. Streak of fire. And then I just kind of. Go, okay, okay, okay. Oops. Hold up at the back. <laughs> All right. The creature 
first thing that happens is tentacles from its back lash out at Ptolemaeus and Hyrax as they are the closest up front. And <laughs> that's going to be an eight for Ptolemaeus. I think that probably misses. And yes. that is going to be a 13 for Hyrax, which I assume might miss, but I'm not sure. Uh, my AC is a 16 without my shield. Well, then I assume he misses. Sounds good. So those tentacles go flying past you, and it takes a step forward and just punches at Ptolemaeus. Oh, ooh. Mm -hmm. But again, he's obviously not doing very well because the Nat 1 says that he punches at him and misses. That's gross. Okay. Ah, uh, man. But the it's... good news is, Ptolemaeus, you're up. No, there's, that's not a good news. It's, it's bad news. It's bad news because he's too close. I'm very... I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. I would like to... Boy, I yeah, I definitely do not like that. Mm -hmm. How would I want to do this? Can I? Uh, using a string, like I'll just, I'll just kind of speak out, not knowing what kind of creature it is. I'll speak out in in a celestial. And in a a language that it probably doesn't understand, in words that don't really mean too much to the creature, uh, try a vicious mockery into its ears. Okay. It's a wisdom saving throw. Yep. Uh, that is a six. Okay. All right. I was about to tell you the, the spell save DC, but, eh, you know, I don't <laughs> think I need to. Uh, <laughs> Higher than that. Yeah, definitely higher than that. It is going to be four points of damage, and it is disadvantaged on its next attack roll. Okay. And you see as it... As the mockery gets... You can just see the effect on it as it does it, and then it just looks at you and goes... Ugh. And appears to maybe shake it off. Uh, I will, at this glorious time of you know violence i'll just stay in the area as to not get hit uh with a attack of opportunity but also kind of behind me uh say proto this is when violence is going to be good not a bad thing i trust that you understand what to do with that information and i'll use that as my bardic inspiration to give him a 1d8 very good. Hyrax. All right. Well, this guy is too close to me for all my throwing stuff that I like to do. Uh, so my first attack of, I believe I get three on the first round. My first attack is going to be a shove. <laughs> okay. Um, to try and shove him directly, like diagonally away from me. Okay. Aiming for this square back here, if I can get in there. All right. Um, so that's uh, opposed athletics, is that right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And that is going to be uh, a 19. And you shove him back against this wall. All right. Extra attack. Um, I am going to throw a dart. You know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try for a... Uh, Sharpshooter. I don't know what his AC is. It's probably too high for this, but I'm going to try for it. Uh, a 13 is probably not going to hit, but you know, might as well that try. is a miss. That is a miss. And as a bonus action, because this is the first round of combat, I'm going to attack again. Uh, does a 15 hit? No, it does not. Damn. All right. Well, at least I got him away from me. Uh, I'm going to try and move back here. I'm going to stand back here on the uh, on the acid. 
I'm going to use Ptolemaeus as a shield. Okay. <laughs> That'll be fine. He'll be fine. Other Brave people Sir are Robin. Move in front. Okay. <laughs> All right. Adrastos. Okay. Thinking strategically, Adrastos doesn't want anyone to come around and see him being all like, ha-ha, and then trying to be an animal again. So he's going to stick to his animal mode. He's going to run over to it, and he is going to savagely maul it as he does a fainting attack with his claw. All right. I, I, I have a question. I don't want yes. to be that guy, but is Hyrax still holding the leash on, on you? And I would have let go of it. I would have <laughs> okay. let go of all right. it. I was, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, that okay, would have been so really I am, funny. But I, this will be a fainting attack. <laughs> I figured since he was darting and shoving, he couldn't hold on to it. But that is a very yeah, good question. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. too, but I just wanted to make sure. I start Never coughing, take anything like for granted. A, like when a dog pulls on its collar too much, it starts, like, <laughs> coughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 25. That is a hit. All right. I would hope so. <laughs> okay. This will not be a lot of damage, but it's okay. Um, oh, actually, that's not bad. Um, 14 damage. All right. Excellent. You see, as you open up wounds in this emaciated body, there is, however, no blood, but this black ichor that flows. Okay. Well, um... I am a cat, and I am savaging him, and I only have one arm, so I'm going to give him the, the kitty paws with my feet. <laughs> Claw him that way. <laughs> you uh, wait for him to rub your belly. You roll yeah. on your back. <laughs> <laughs> you fall into my trap. All right, uh, but yeah, so this will be my second attack. All right. Um, 23. That's a hit. Eight damage. Excellent. Man, I should use my claws more often. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, all <laughs> right. Uh, but that is going to be the end of my turn. All right. As you tear into him with this, he looks forward and utters something... <clears throat> In a language you don't understand, very dark, deep sounding words. But we'll get I back will, to that in a minute. I will roar in response. <laughs> <laughs> Vara. All right. And let's see. I, for some reason, my sheet implies that I have all of my spell slots, but I don't, I can't imagine that's true. I honestly don't remember. Because I used at least Tidal Wave. Yes, that is true. So I'm going to mark at least one slot for that. I was in bear form for a, good for a long time. That is site. true. So, yes. Yeah, I think the only thing I used last session was Tidal Wave. Var running so, around the Tower Bear. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, Somebody had to make the pun. I'm sorry. Exercising her right to bear arms. That's right. Truly. Exactly. As always. Um, freedom. Freedom. <laughs> I think from here, I'll just go ahead and... Um, let's see. Um, let's see what I'll go ahead and... Oh, well, we don't know what's coming. Okay, I'll save my other wild shape. I will go ahead and just use a guiding bolt at first level. I have one that I get for free, so I'm going to use the free one. That is a 24 to hit. All right. And it was 11 damage, radiant damage. All right. As your guiding bolt flashes across towards him, this huge tentacle whips up out of the acid in front of you, mm. catches the blast, and pulls it back down into the acid. That sounds like cheating. 
um, we should probably not be standing here anymore. <laughs> and Vara will go ahead and use the rest of her turn to move and not be in the acid. Run, right. run like hell mode. Run like hell mode engaged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we say in my gaming community, hi diddle dee dee. It's time to freaking flee. <laughs> <laughs> Proto. Well, uh, taking uh, the cue from my friend who said, now is the time for violence, um, <laughs> he'll start moving forward and all he'll say is, understood, Telemaeus. And then uh, from that same you heard before, offensive mode activated is all you hear as he just steps up through everybody and takes two quick, uh, I'll take both of my attack actions and bash him in the face. Uh, there's a 21 hit. Yes. All right. And does, does a 27 nat 20 hit? <laughs> uh, yes. So that is max uh, damage plus roll on your uh, nat 20. Uh, let me see. Let me go to my screen here uh put all my actions so max damage is going to be uh it's 1d8 so it'll be eight uh right. plus three so it's going to be 11 okay and since the first one hit uh let me roll that that's going to be a seven plus two so that's nine on the second hit um the crit um as i'm bringing it down I'm going to uh, have a little bit of fun with it. And I'm going to use my Divine Smite. When I hit with a melee weapon attack, I'm going to expend a uh, level one slot for 2d8 radiant damage. Six and five. So 11 radiant damage. Holy crap. All right. Um, real, real quick, if you, if you smited, that, that also counts, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that is max damage. Is that yeah. max damage if I use the yes. smite on that? Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. well, then screw that. It's 16. 16. <laughs> That's 16 instead of the 11. Well, it's both. No, no, 16 and the 11. Yeah. It doesn't matter because he's already <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> His but tentacles flash out. His damage, Tam. And, yeah, as you want, come forward and hit him and just start pummeling it in, and the smite hits and he just sizzles and his tentacles go up, shake, and then slowly wither back into his body, and he just collapses into a heap of nothingness on the floor in front of him. Did the tentacle that came out of the water look like his, or did it look like a separate entity? It was totally a different thing. It was more of a, looked like some kind of a a black creature from the darker side of things. Hmm. Yeah. Did, it, uh, did it look like it was injured by the uh, guiding bolt when it grabbed it, or did it look like it fully deflected it? Give me a perception check. And let's uh, see how much you so, gathered of this. As that hit comes, that last all hit right. comes down with all that radiant damage, I will turn, after I see the tentacles wither, I will turn to Telemaeus and say, is that acceptable? Very. <laughs> These teetering digital dice are kind of <laughs> driving. It was like at a 19, and then it just over to a one so that was a seven uh oh, you're not okay. sure you're you're not sure you didn't get enough view it was very quick that it came up <laughs> you have defeated the tentacled creature you now stand before another one of those infernal doors doors again Doors again. All right, I'm moving away again. <laughs> I'm a Morrison fan. What can I say? I'm gonna look at the uh, the body of the thing that's on the ground and mm -hmm. kind of like move it around with the uh, the heft of my uh, warhammer, seeing if there's any keys or anything on it. Uh, no, it is badly singed and burned. But you know what? You know what? I'm gonna say no. Give me an investigation check. Let's see if there's anything on this. I'd rather this. not. Um, I'm afraid seen... you you've asked now. You have to. Fuck. That that does remind me. Um, as he's doing that, can I 14? specifically notice to, go, to go see ahead. if the go sorry the if the hammer touching the the black ichor of its like blood does it actually disintegrate or, or decay in any way? 
uh, it actually appears to be kind of like if you were to take something and, and overcook it and burn it. It's kind of got that plasticky uh, feel to it. Um, okay. It's whatever this thing uses for, for blood. I see. Okay. Uh, as you dig through, um, no, you do not find anything of value. All right, we got to figure out this door thing. Everything hinges on it. <laughs> okay, sorry. So bad. Sorry for, but so sorry. good. Sorry for being a knob. I'm hey. out. I'm done. <laughs> uh, so at seeing the door, uh, Icarus. Oh, hello, Proto. Okay, Proto, watch again this time. No, next time you might even have a go at this and I'll get to work on the door. And you'll also see this time just a little kind of hand gesture. And she just seems to go into extreme focus mode as she casts guidance on herself while she does it because she's really trying to impress you. <laughs> and I am with a, I, with a six. <laughs> I just that's with that, guidance. This, uh, no, you get a plus four from me. Ten. And, and regardless, was... I'm still impressed. <laughs> I was so looking forward to a broken lock. No. <laughs> you unlock the door. Oh. I'll, I'll just turn to, to Proto at, really quick. I'll just... Do you... Does everybody in this realm like doors this much? There's been a door af around every corner. I don't know. I was, I was created. I was sent to war. I was sent on a job. And then I hibernated. I didn't use many doors. I've seen more doors today than probably my entire time awake. I feel the same, honestly. Let's keep moving. Um, I'll go first this time. Yeah. I will just saddle next to the door. And I will again, in typical I am soldier robot, uh, walk through the door. You attempt to open the door, and it yeah. doesn't seem to want to move. Uh, <clears throat> I will, I will turn, smile at Tikaros, who just and be like, and I'm going to just go, ooh, I believe the hinge is stuck. And I'm going to hit it with my shoulder and bash it open. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me an athletics check as you try to bash this door open, please. All right. Athletics is up. That's going to be a 19. Uh, 12 plus 7. All right. Um, you hit the door. You feel as you make somewhat of a dent in it, but this is Bayesk steel. You don't force mm. it open. Oh. It's, it's still a sliding door, too, right? Mm hmm. Yes. Hmm. It might not go that direction, Proto. I will attack <laughs> the other way. Just kind of like, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of notice like it's I think it's supposed to slide out. I will attempt to slide it. Again, you you pull on it. And it just seems it seems almost as though it's stuck, maybe. <clears throat> Is it Did magic? It I'm sorry, there were two voices. <laughs> Is it magic? I ask the group in general. <laughs> uh, did it have any give at all, or did I just dent the door? Uh, you, it, you felt it, you've kind of made a bit of an impression in the door. You definitely didn't bend the door. You hear a, a voice from inside say something, but do any of you speak goblin? Umi, umi, umi. <laughs> you hear you hear someone inside a very 
deep sounding voice, very unusual for a goblin. This Maybe says, a bugbear. What password? We want a password. Password. I say password in goblin. Yes, need password. It isn't password. Do you have bugbears in this world, e Eberon? I do not know that name, but I, it could be. I don't believe I've seen one. Or one of those. I'll, I'll just kind of point at the statue, the hobgoblin statue. Ah. Uh. We don't have a password, and I can't talk to it. I don't know the language. I feel as if this is a great way to compel the rest of us to go back to the other side to look for Prime. Yes, perhaps so. You think we'll find some clue there? One, we're going to find another fight. Give password or I'll sound alarm! He says he'll sound the alarm if we don't have a password. There's no opening or anything. How, how are we hearing him? Uh, uh, he's apparently talking very loudly through the wall. The All question right. is, how can he hear you? He, she, it. It could be anything. Mm, so. Right. Uh, I'm going to look around the, uh, the statue and see if there are um, any clues at, at all. Can, can I grab the tentacle of that monster? <laughs> and put it in the acid and see if it oh we can't get through the uh because it's walk water walk right we can't get to the acid yeah no, you can. it, it, it well, can, oh, we can. it's cast on us not not yeah, on it's you. on you oh, so, so true. i will yes. grab the uh a tentacle from the the guy mm -hmm. and dump it and dunk it into the it, uh the it acid just begins and... to sizzle immediately ptolemaeus you were going to investigate mm. the statue yes in any I, Can anyone move this acid to the door? I was about to say, uh, so in my inventory, <laughs> in my backpack, I'm supposed to have an iron pot for cooking. Could this hold the acid long enough to splash it onto the door? Interesting idea. Uh, it is a dirty Those, 20, by the way, mm, just right. on, the, on the statue. Um, as you're investigating the statue, uh, you notice there's a small lever on the wall behind it. I am going to pull the lever. You pull the lever, and from behind you, at the pool of acid, you hear a noise as this stone bridge stretches out from your side to the far side of the pit. Oh. Not a wasted... Okay. Nah, not a wasted spell, then. Uh... Saves us for one thing, but this this is definitely a conundrum. Right. With that failure to get the password, I'm going to try the pot trick. Let's go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, your, your iron pot, which may have gathered some rust over time, is becoming very clean as the acid burns the, <laughs> the rust away. And... Uh, I'm going to splash it on the door All if right. I can. Uh, it hits the door, and any, you know, oils and things from fingerprints or such, uh, from Proto blamming into it and leaving whatever residue, that burns off in the acid, but it doesn't appear to do anything to the door. The door itself, okay. It does run down onto the, uh, the ground, and now you have a nice little pool of acid on the floor in front of the door. Doesn't do anything I recommend to the floor not either, stepping yeah. in it. Yeah. 
it cleans it, makes it nice and clean. Any That's any nice. lichen or anything mm -hmm. that had formed there is is pretty much gone now. I believe we should go back and deal with some of the cloaks before they sound the alarm. We we shouldn't be here. It's my it's... fault. I hit the door. I'm sorry. I didn't want Tikaros to feel bad that the door didn't open. We it's were all trying fault. to get through the door. Exactly. Let's just get, get back to the area <laughs> so that there's no immediate danger. The door is going to slide just a little bit, just a crack, maybe less than an inch. And you're going to hear that voice again. You, in, in, in Goblin, you, are you, are you, you out there? <clears throat> and he says a name, but he doesn't What's say it name? in Goblin. He says it in a language you, you definitely don't know. Which language is it? Um, it's a very dark and deep sounding language, uh, almost demonic yeah. in its forms. Yeah. I'm go as soon as he uses that same language that I heard from the guy, I'm going to just try something and grab one of the tentacles and kind of brush it against the, the, the inched out door. Oh, okay. Uh, can He's going to say oh. the name again and say something else after it. You, you can recognize the cadence of the words even if you don't know what the words mean. So. Mm -hmm. He is talking to this creature. I'm going to jam my uh, the heft of just my um, <laughs> my hand axe in there and with my strength try to wrench it. Alright. Give me a strength check. Okay. Strength. Oh. Str sure. Is that an advantage or what is that? Are you yeah, doing that it? Would be a, that would be an advantage. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy. Thank you, Herex. That was, an, that was a four um, <laughs> plus eight. So it would have been a 12. Let me roll again. That's a 19 plus eight. It's a 27. There we go. You begin to pull that on the door and the door starts to move. Something is yelled out in Goblin to basically. Uh, Get over here and help would be the uh, equivalent of it. He's, he's calling for reinforcements. We should act quickly. Uh, so at hearing the he's calling for reinforcements, I will turn to the group and go, I would like to call for reinforcements. <laughs> <laughs> Does um, anybody want to help me wrench this uh, door open? Adrastos. I'm on it. As that's happening. Uh, fraggle, fraggle. Can I? Since I'm already at the door while they're they're pulling the and I was at the door with a tentacle, can I look over and peer around the court like a little bit of the, the crack and okay. see who's pulling that door door? Okay. Absolutely. You look through and you see this. What what you can see basically is at first you think you're looking at a tree trunk. And then you realize, no, this is the arm of whatever creature is holding this door closed. Hmm. And your eyes focus to it in the light of looking through this, and you can see it, it's... When I say tree trunk, I'm referring more to thighs and, and the fact that the, the muscle, the sinew, the veins that are popping give it kind of that <clears throat> tree look, but it's definitely fleshy. Okay. If that's the case, I will, as soon as uh, I see that, I'm going to, I don't know if anybody else wanted to do something first, actually. Uh, I'm just helping Proto open the door. I'm, good. I'm busy at the moment! Okay. Um, <laughs> I would like to use my little, neat little bard, bardo combo and uh, speak into its, its mind with my, uh, with oh. my Celestial. All right. And I will use... I will use my bardic inspiration to cast unsettling words okay. with, my, with a bonus action and combine it with a uh, dissonant whispers to try to get him to run away. All right. So it is going to be, I'll cast it at third level. 
and the saves DC is 15, but he has to roll a D8 and subtract his save. Uh, I'm not even going to bother rolling the D8 because he failed miserably. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll so... roll the D8 anyway because, hey, let's see if we can get to a negative number. What do you know? We did. That's a negative uh -oh. four. <laughs> so, needless to say, he failed that. He could... Maybe. You hear loud, thundering footsteps as the door flies open. Okay. Uh, it's also... 10, 15, 13, 16, uh, 16 points of damage, I think. How many, All right. many do I will? Give me just a second. Yeah, I'm 16. trying. I'm fighting with roll 20 once again, so I can enlighten the room for you. My bad. Right, it's actually 22. 22. 22? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will get that registered in here. Yeah. All right. The door flies open, and you see this creature that is running the opposite direction towards a door on the opposite side of the wall. But closer to you, you see these two creatures, small in height. The best thing you could probably equate them to, um, if somebody were to take two goblins and force them together into one body so that you end up with a four-armed creature with two mouths that's somewhat roughly goblin-shaped, that's what's standing in front of you. Oh, no. And uh, do you want to re-roll initiative or go with what we had before? Uh, oh, I'd like to re-roll initiative so I can have <laughs> my <laughs> first <laughs> round of Please. Stuff. Please. I'm fine with re-rolling initiative. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Also, I'm having a lot of trouble with my mouse. I'm sorry. I, I got a five oh, no. this time. It's like stuck on the bottom of my screen, and whenever I move it up, it just snaps back into the bottom of my screen. Oh, hey. It's exactly the same. Oh, it didn't go to the track, but I got an 18. Okay. I did so much better. It's a five. So, Vara, that was an 18, you said? Yes. Right. Servants of the Tentacle Lord. Pretty sure that's the title of a hentai. Yeah. <laughs> I would not like to think about that that way. <laughs> well, whatever, you know. I'm... Whatever. I don't judge. Whatever, judge. whatever boats your float. <laughs> Um, I'll so just who are we missing outside. here? I can't, I can't roll at all. My mouse gotcha. is completely screwed. Yeah, um, if you have real dice, go for it, man. That's uh, it's a 16. 16. All right. I'll get you in here in just a moment. I don't know how to fix this. I almost hit remove all turns. That would have been really bad. <laughs> all right. Hyrax. You're up first. All right. Uh, wonderful. So let's see. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of unpleasant looking things in here. Um, I'm going to focus on... Hmm. Do I think that this thing was probably what, was, uh, what we were talking to? It looks like the largest thing. Here. That is a very... You know, you have a thing for aberrations, if I remember correctly. I don't. It's monstrosities. Oh, monstrosities. Never mind, then. Um, yep. Yeah, this is a very large creature. In fact, I should make his token a little bit bigger. Sorry about that. So, he is a very large, very ugly, fleshy uh, bond of muscles. I also never took back my shield and my javelin, did I? My javelin. No, did not. All right, looks like I'm going to be rolling with darts for a little bit longer, which means <laughs> some sharpshooting. Um... <clears throat> Uh, let's see. I will throw... <laughs> hmm. I'm going to throw a couple of da darts at these, these little, little, little bastards. Let me, let me designate them so we can say ugly thing one, ugly goblin thing one, and ugly goblin thing blue. So, there we go. 
indeed. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'll throw a dart at red, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah I'll sharpshoot it. Let's see if I can hit it with a plus one. That might be fun. Uh, that's a ten to hit. It's probably not gonna work out. Uh, that is a miss. All right, and I'll throw another one at blue. Okay. Uh, doing the same thing. That's a four to hit. So that's not going to hit. Um, you know what? For my bonus action one, uh, I'm going to throw at big guy right here, but I'm not going to. Well, nah, I'm going to risk it. Let's go. <laughs> Let me get all my damage dice together just in case. Uh, this one, and then lastly, I'm living. Living dangerously. I haven't hit a single thing tonight because I keep trying to hit with darts. Uh, oh, yes, that is a uh, dirty 20 to hit. That's a hit. With, with, and I did indeed roll max damage. That is four plus eight plus 10. Uh, I believe it's an extra D8 if I hit on the, with the bonus action row with Gloomstock, Dread Ambusher at one D8. Um, so that is, uh, uh, 22 plus three. So that is 25 piercing damage. Holy guacamole. All right. On big fella there. All right. Big fella looks hurt and unhappy. Well, that'll, that'll happen. Uh, and I'm running out of darts, but that's fine. Uh, that's going to be my turn. All right. So since I got a few things to handle in this order, uh, Ptolemaeus, how long does the uh, fear from your uh, attack? I, I cannot check right now. I'm so sorry. I, I'm like, my mouse is going crazy. I'm trying to pull it up. Uh, let me let me use my phone to find it. If, if is anything. it wireless? Uh, yes, it is wireless. Change the battery. <laughs> I am trying to try to charge it is what I was. Is. Ah, OK currently doing uh let me double check real quick for you yeah i can't remember everything you cast that's why i'm having to look it up too so yeah um it was the what's what's actually affecting him right now is actually just the, dissonant, the uh dissonant, dissonant whispers, yeah, dissonant whispers. Okay. so I'll, I'll pull up and use my phone for now well it doesn't say that it's a persistent fear so i'm going to say that he's Probably recovered as he ran away from you. Yeah, that's that, that's fine. So he would be all the way against the wall here. So and he is going to charge forward because he is a uh, very angry kind of thing. I'm gonna move these other guys a little bit over so they got some room here. Yeah, it Sorry. just uses he just uses his reaction that one turn is it and is it okay? All right. So he is going to charge forward, and uh, there are two people in the door, so he's going to take a swing at each of them. So for the attack against uh, Proto, that is going to be a 17. That's a miss. All right. That's a miss. All right. For the attack against Ptolemaeus, that is going to be a 19. I don't like that. Let's uh let's <laughs> let's do a silvery barbs on that one and make him reroll that, please. Alright. That's gonna be a nat 20. Okay, that's I am not joking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so that's okay. Sorry. He still takes he just he still just takes the 19. Is at disadvantage. <laughs> so, uh yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, ni 19. I will take that 19 and you're, 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 you're happy with it now, huh? Now I am it? very happy with that one. Right. Yes. That is going to be 11 bludgeoning damage as he just pounds his fist into you. Okay. That's painful. Uh I will give the advantage uh who's who's coming directly next? After me, I will give it to. Uh, I'll give it to the, 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 the Devara. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Thanks. The two goblin y looking creatures being somewhat blocked, but not totally by uh, the big fella, 
Um, each one of them is going to take a crossbow shot at their closest target to begin with. And I'm going to use different color dice this time, so I know which one's which. Uh, the one that goes for uh, Proto, that is going to be a 21. Oh, we've lost Proto. I'll come back to that one. Uh, the one that goes for Ptolemaeus, the crossbow shot, is going to be a 13. Uh, 13, I think, still hits me. That hit, still hits me. All right. At this point. So that is going to be four piercing damage. That's good. I will take that. Um, since Proto's not back yet, uh, uh that his goblin AC's creature twenty. I'm sorry. Yeah, his AC was twenty. His AC, oh, his is, AC 20. is twenty. Then I hit him. So thank okay. you. I'll I'll mark it. All right, and let me get his damage here for his. His damage for his is going to be six piercing damage. Got it. Thank you very much. Write it down. The goblins are then going to step forward and with their spear that they have in another arm, because remember, they have four, they are going to jab with those. So Ptolemaeus! Love it. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, uh, that's, I, I think he missed. That's a nine. So I'm assuming that's oh, going to miss yeah, you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, not going to hit. And, he's, and the other spear is also going to uh, miss against Proto. Okay. But... Once again, they're going to jab with the spear. The one that goes against uh, Ptolemaeus, that is going to be 10, which I assume misses. Misses. And the 16 is going to miss Proto. So that was the only damage that they did. Okay. The creature standing in the back... Um, is going to say a few words to them in Goblin, basically things like, you know, really things to help lift their mood, like, stop them, you ignorant fools, or I will have you slain, you know, something like that, you know, really bad. But he's only, you know, he's a very short guy, has horns coming out, uh, has a short tail coming off the back, and a purplish skin. Not a creature you've seen before, except for Proto, might have seen Proto, you took some damage, uh, Ptolemaeus can, uh, Shoot you the deets real quick. He took notes for it. Okay, and uh, Vara, you're up. All righty. Um, I think I'll go ahead and step forward so I'm in line with everyone else. And I'll go ahead and shoot a guiding bolt at the main big, big guy. Okay. I'll be, I'll do it. At, he's a big guy. I'll do second level. Um, or actually, hold on. Let me hit two at once. Let me go. I'm, can I, I can do moonbeam indoors, right? Am I crazy? Yes, you can. Great. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do Moonbeam so I can hit multiple. It would just be between the red and blue, which one is more damaged? Neither. Neither. Okay, great. Right. Um, We've only I'll... been hitting the big guy. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and do a Moonbeam. Uh, red. I'll try okay. it here. Okay. So a Moonbeam comes down. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time in turn, ghostly flames. Okay, and that won't be until its turn, right? Because it's a, at turn start. Okay. But it'll make a con save once it's on its turn. Okay. I will make a note, but remind me when I get there because you know a lot of stuff's going to happen between now and then. Yes. All right. Anything else? Oh, yes. So basically, she just steps forward, looks in, uh, gets a better look, and goes, "Okay, yeah." And then she steps in, yes. moons everybody. Moons and... everyone. Yeah. Typical. Typical. Man. <laughs> All right. Ptolemaeus. <clears throat> <laughs> I can't even see the map right now. <laughs> um, 
Um, uh, without the map, can I? Uh, could you help me move me out, disengage me out of the way? Okay. Uh, I would. I would like. Are to you do going so. back um, towards the acid? You're not going in the room, right? You want to go away from the room. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go away from the room. Try to be in the corner or somewhere. Um, at, as far how, as how far away do you want to go? Your full movement or? Uh, no, still, still within the combat, but being not being the closest one. I'm just gonna to move them. you around the corner then. Yes, that sounds okay. good. And right. um, uh, I will. Uh, at that time, I will just say, Protos, it's it's. Definitely time for violence again. And with that, I will use my bonus action to also activate my Cloak of Stars. And right. that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Very good. Thank you. Tikaros. That's me. I'm going to, I want to peer through around my companions and I can see if I can probably get a shot off here. And then I'm going to get a little distracted. I'm going to pull out the shiny diamond I got given by Melandria, and I'm going to think she would have fallen out of that Hyrax rope trick like hours ago. She's probably wandering around and now she's on a different plane and we're never going back to save her. I'm glad she gave me this diamond and I'll start <laughs> spinning it in my hand and then a beautiful sphere of energy is going to just pop out of it and I'm going to channel all of my sorceress energy. I'm going to hurl two spheres of energy. One at the big guy right okay. in the doorway and one at blue. Let's okay. see if they hit. So I'm going to do a second level chromatic orb. All right. All right. First one on blue. Oh, yeah. Is it 22 to hit? Absolutely hits. Second one on big crazy natural one. What a waste. That oh, one well. probably misses. So here's 48 damage on blue at least. 8, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 points, and I'm going to make it lightning damage. So some sparks of energy just kind of erupt all around him as it hits. All right. So how much was that total? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 points. 19. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. You hit him. You hear bones break. And see as wounds just open up all across him, but he's still standing. But you, but you next definitely, time. definitely hurt him very badly. Him, it. Oh. I mean, it's two of them, so it could be anything. All right, that's my turn. All right, very good. Adrestos. Okay, I'm going to step to right here. And I'm going to stab the large gentleman with my javelin hand. <laughs> okay. Assassin's Creed style. Nice. Nice. Uh, nope. <laughs> Second attack. <laughs> Better. 25. That's a hit. Okay. Uh, for eight damage. All right. And then I'm going to take a deep breath, exhale, and action search. All right. And then this time I'm going to make a fainting attack at him to give myself advantage. All right. Uh, 20, even. Dirty 20. All right. That is a hit, of course. All righty. And that will be, oh, much better. Uh, 18 damage. All right. And then um, for my... He, immediately as you hit him and do this, his fist punches out at you and does a 21 hit. Yes. All right. That is going to be... Better roll two die. That is going to be 15 bludgeoning damage as he just right, I can swings back and hits you with his fist. 
All right. I'll just kind of take it and then come back with that kind of, oh my gosh, I've been hit and I'm going crazy smile and I'm going to hit him with my fourth attack. All right. Uh, Who we? Uh, 21. All right. Definitely a hit. 11 damage. All right. He is not looking good. Good. I will just put it that way. Anything else? No. <laughs> no, that's enough. Haven't I done enough? <laughs> <laughs> Proto, you're up. All right. So I've just watched the shaved lion <laughs> and my bard friend just get uh, kind of wrecked a little bit. So can I reach him from where I am? Am I by the door? You're right by the door. Think... Yeah. Okay. So I'll just take my hammer and just start swinging it. Um, uh, that's going to be. Uh, 17 plus seven. Okay. So that's a 24. That's a definite hit. Um, should I just roll both of my hits now and then do damage, or what do you want me to do? That's fine. Okay. Um, all right. And then it's going to be a 21 on the second. That's a hit as well. All right. On the first hit, I am going to eat the. Nine, but I'm going to expend a uh, level one spell slot for a uh, uh, the two d eight. So that's going to be. Okay, so it's going to be nine, four. So that's going to be uh, another nine on that one. Okay. On the second hit. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a seven. That's going to be ten. Um, I will smite again. This time I'm going to do it at a level two. Okay. So it'll be 3d8, 3d6, 10, 17 radiant damage on that one. All right. You hit with this, the radiant damage comes out, and the creature just stiffens for a moment, and you see as these crinkles of, of burn just appear down its body, and it straightens up, looks down at you for just a moment, and then falls backwards onto the ground. As it falls backwards uh, and falls, I'll say, we don't want any more violence. All right. Hyrax. Uh, so, let's see. How bad is this thing looking, this, this big fella? Uh, he's dead. He's laying flat okay. out on the ground. And uh, and Proto did not throw me my javelins, right? They're on my back. Gotcha. Which is right in front of you. All right. I'm going to reach forward and grab a javelin. All right. Or or a few javelins. How many can I grab? Can I just get my whole bundle? Just. Uh, I think that's probably going to be hooked to his back. So I think you'd have to take them out, which means you would have to be holding them separately. So... Might be a little right. difficult, but I leave that. I leave that to you. All right. So here's another thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can draw a weapon that has the thrown property as part of the attack you make with the weapon. Can yep. I draw it from someone else's back using that? I, I'm saying yes. Go for it. All right. Uh, then I am just going to real quick just reach over. <laughs> just uh, you know, rapid succession. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I only get two attacks this turn, but I am going to throw them at these little fellows. Okay. Now that oh, big guy is little. dead. Mm -hmm. it, uh, relatively speaking, to the uh, big fellow there. All right. So to red. Damn, I don't think either of these are going to hit, because uh, I rolled. Yeah, eleven's not going to hit either of these guys. No, is it? no. That is Definitely two not. throws and two misses. 
Um, <laughs> and I don't have anything to do with my bonus actions because I've been out of spell slots for a while now. So uh, that's my turn, I'm afraid. All right. The uh, the two goblin esque creatures uh, they hold the crossbow up over their head and with one of their four arms they cock that weapon while the other one takes a spear and hurls their spheres. First spear is going to hurl at Proto. Second one is going to hurl at Adrastos, and they are both going to miss horribly. And they are going to take crossbow shots. Let's hope they do better, or I may have to throw my dice away. Okay, uh, the one against Adrastos, that is going to be a 21 to hit. Okay. And the one against Proto, that's going to be a 23 to hit. Does that hit? Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, that first hit... Uh, Adrastos, that is going to be six piercing damage. Proto, that is going to be four piercing damage. And they are going to, with their fourth hand, pick up the javelin that Hyrax had thrown at both of them and hurl them back. Oh, well, that's nice. They're giving them back to me. Well, I don't have my shield that. back to either, do I? So, uh, that's uh, also no, on my back. No, I don't believe that you do. Uh, I don't think a 12 is going to hit you. It won't. And so therefore I know the other roll absolutely does not hit you. That's what they All get right. for trying to send your weapons back to you. Meanwhile... Uh, how much how much damage did uh, Hyrax take from the crossbows? Uh, it was I a didn't take any damage yet. Oh, you Drastos. did? You took them? Um, okay, that being uh, said, I will... Um, I will take half the damage into myself when I see it hit you. Okay. How much was that total you again? You said six. So you take so three. I'll, and... I'll take three of it. And I take three. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. So the the odd looking purple skinned guy is going to step forward over the body of his fallen creature. And he's going to take a stab at Adrastos. Simply because he's not quite, doesn't look quite as armored as the guy who's mostly made of metal. It's fair. fair. And that is going to be a 17 to hit. That will hit. Oh, wow. Uh, I will silvery barbs that. Okay. Uh, please roll at a disadvantage. That is a. That is a nat 20. <laughs> Why can't I roll I, these the first time? <laughs> take, take the 17 address, so I will give you the advantage as well. Okay. <laughs> this guy stepped into the moonbeam, didn't he? Or through it? Am I crazy? Uh, how yeah, What's the, the diameter of the moonbeam? And I forgot to do the moonbeam, so I will do that. Thank you. You're good. It was, um, it's a five feet cylinder. Oh, uh, then no, he did not. And it was located mostly like right here. Because he would he would have had room to go around it. Okay. Right here. So. But the red guy does get hit. Oh yeah, I will I will handle him in a minute. I apologize because okay. no, I'm you're totally, good. I totally brain spaced on that one. Um, Adrastos, I need a uh, Constitution saving throw, please. And don't forget, you oh. get a plus four from plus being four, next yeah. to uh, Proto. Giving me effectively a plus nine. Nice. All right, so that'll be a 22. All right. Uh, no ill harms from that, then. Farah, you're up. Did you want to do the moonbeam damage? Oh, thank you. So he has to make a con save. He failed. Cool. He takes 2d10 radiant damage, coming out to 9. All right. It burns his! All right. Any... Now it's your turn, Farah. <laughs> awesome. OK. Um, let's see. 
I will continue. Now the moonbeam is concentration. But I can, I believe I can move it around. Question mark. On each of your turns, you can use. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and move it and center it over these two now. Okay. Well, right yeah. over the edge up because you said it's five foot diameter, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying okay. to hit. I'm trying to hit both of these guys. Basically. Okay. Gotcha. And that's my turn. So you just All see right. the the moonbeam shift in the room. All right, Ptolemaeus. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move. Underneath the to the square underneath Vara to get a little bit more uh, view into the room. Okay. And uh, I think also at this point when I'm moving, it'll be the first time I I notice that that the cloak of stars does not match my hair. <laughs> All right. So it, it'll it uh, I'll I'll just I just want to make a note of that and um I will. At the uh, first of all, I will use my bonus action and be like, Proto, not to be a contrarian, but we do want more violence, at least when if until the room gets cleared out, and um, give him a bardic inspiration with what I said, and then I will also hurl Eldritch Blast into the red one. All right. The first one is going to be. So hold on, I need the energy dude. Stuff. That is a Can I respond knight. that I did many damage? <laughs> I did many <laughs> violence. Yeah. More, more violence. Um, I sound very bad. Like a, I sound like the villain now. You, um, you sound like Agrius is what you sound like. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, 19, 19 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. And that is eight points of damage for the first one. All right. The second one is a 30, 20 to hit. Okay, that's a hit. And that is nine points of damage. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, I think that is it for my turn. He looks he looks to be in bad shape, but he is still standing. I mean, he's two goblins in one, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my turn. All right. Tikaros! Yeah! Hearing all this talk of violence. I'm enjoying this violence very much, I'm saying out loud. I'm going to drop the diamond back into a pocket and I'm going to just narrate out loud. You know, thunder damage is fun and all, but I just, I love fire so much. And channel another sorcery point to do the firebolt cantrip and shoot out two beams of fire at the horned creature and blue. I'm trying to finish him off this time. All right. First one at horn creature. Oh yeah, seventeen. Uh, I believe that is a hit. Let me double check. Yes, that is a hit. Seven and sixteen on blue. Uh, that's a hit. Yeah. Damage to horn creature. Excellent damage roll. Sixteen points of damage. Fire damage. Wow. On All right. Horn, and blue take some damage. Nine points of fire damage. He bursts into flame and what's left of him collapses onto the floor. Bad. Squealing from both mouths in pain and agony. I love it. I mean, that's what the two mouths are for. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Tikaros? That's my turn. All right. Adrestos. Uh, Let's unmute first. <laughs> so all this talk of violence um, and this horned creature speaking in languages I don't understand. I'm going to try to speak in a language he doesn't understand. So I'm going to say to him in Minotaur, I never agreed to stop being violent. <laughs> I did give you an advantage for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stab him about the face. <laughs> oh, I miss with, Agrios. I miss him. With the advantage from um, Tully, that will be a 22. Uh, that's a definite hit. 
All right. So that will be eight damage. All right. And then I am going to expend my last superiority die to try and do a fainting attack. Natural 20! <laughs> this is uh, not going to end well for this gentleman. Good, goodbye, little tiefling. <laughs> um, okay, so that is before rolls. 20 damage. He's dead. <laughs> Great. Good night. So what I'll Hello. do is I'll I'll stab him and then with my free hand I'll just put my hand on his shoulder and just pull him onto my arm and lift him up off the ground. <laughs> and fling him into the room. All right. His just dagger because he's like 2 feet shorter than you doesn't mean you have to do that, man. That's yes it not... does. That's exactly <laughs> what it means, Ptolemaeus. His dagger falls from his hand and hits the ground and splatters this vile looking liquid off of it onto the tiles. Anything else? Um so because I'm in battle rage, but not exactly rage, I'm just going to lick the blood off of my arm and just stare <laughs> at the goblin. <laughs> All right. Proto. Muted. Look, it has to happen at least once every game. Uh, to me again. Uh, hearing Adrastos scream a language I don't understand, um, <laughs> my eyes will kind of roll a little bit. I'm a robot, doesn't matter. And then... Out loud, I'll just scream. I also speak other languages in uh, deep speech, and run. You speak in. deep. You speak deep speech. Yeah, yeah, because it's the language of the uh, the Dale Kier. You have been. You have been. I did not realize you spoke deep speech. You have been understanding everything they've said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you said that none of us understood. I, I didn't I realize. You... I didn't know you spoke deep speech. My All bad. right. Well, let's let's could tell me what the fuck you're saying. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, the first one called forth on uh, Zoriat when the tentacle came out of the acid. Okay. Well, knowing <laughs> that, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go in the room, point at the other. <laughs> double goblin thing and be like are you in in deep speech are you zoria and i said i didn't understand <laughs> and i will run in and i will double I violence him mistake. because <laughs> i'm going to double violence him because of this um that's a nat 20 so it shows how angry i am it turns out he is whatever the hell the name was I love and when he, that happens. I just want to say when, <laughs> when you make like an angry gesture and then roll a nat 20, it's like the dice want you to succeed. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a, a, does a 17 hit? Uh, yes. Okay. But it does, a 10 it, plus does, it, does it need to? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really depends on the uh, the damage I roll on this. Um, well, what's, seven. The, what's the base damage on the first hit? Uh, oh, yeah. It's the base damage is a, a eight plus four. He's dead. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, so I just say, are you Zoria? And I just swing at him. And just, I'll say I hit him in the shoulder and his head just goes. <laughs> and he falls. <laughs> and I will turn back to the group and I will say, in common, I do not believe he was Zoria. <laughs> what is oh. a Zoria? I don't know. But it's uh, what the gentleman in the hallway said. Perhaps the creature that he summoned from the acid. Do you believe Zoria would help us? I, I chances aren't good. Couldn't um, imagine so. Um, Everything has been violenced. Right, I think everybody did a great job. I suppose. Eryx is just going to go around collecting his darts and javelins <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, can I search all of the bodies? I want to rifle through their bits. Well, I think mm. the first thing you would notice, Tikros, is the dagger that fell onto the ground. Ooh. While they're looking around, 
I'm going to lay a hand on myself and uh, use my lay on hands to uh, heal my 13 damage as the metal just kind of, I guess, sort of like a car dented just pops back out. <laughs> and then I will say, is anyone else injured? Um, Adra Adrastos is like just bleeding from the mouth and just covered in wounds. And he says, I'm fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, okay. Um, on a scale of one to 61, Adrastos is sitting at about a 35. <laughs> okay. Well, given what I have left, I will come over to you and I'll just uh, kind of touch you with uh, the uh, head of my hammer and then just close my eyes and just open them as you feel it's just a wash over you as you get healed for the uh, 22. 20 or 22? 22. 22. Oh, thank you. Cool. And then I will open my eyes. Does that help your chassis? Uh, yes. yes. Thank you, Proto. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Vara, can we keep him? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I'm gonna I'm, I, rather than reply to you I'm gonna look to Tikaros and kind of give her a knowing look <laughs> in reference to what I had stated earlier of <laughs> they named it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just slap my forehead like this <laughs> uh, I, um. as soon as you slap your forehead I'll just be like you wanted a fire breathing dog I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, but that was different. Yeah, it was different. This, that was evil. That thing was evil. I would like to look at the back wall here. Is there anything exciting and special about it? That is a very large door made of that same biasque metal. And hanging across it is a large heavy beam made out of that metal as well. I seeing seeing that door. Um, I can't move my token right now. I just moved it a little bit, and then my I got mouse trip again. So can yeah, I no look problem. around no the problem. can I look around the room to see if there is uh, a similar lever or some sort of mechanism that that uh, resembled the the lever Absolutely. that I saw from the hobgoblin. Absolutely, give me an investigation check. I'm going to go back to Tikaros, who was searching the bodies, and I'd mentioned that you'd see the dagger because it, oh, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. take much of a check. Um, if you pick the, do you pick the dagger up? Yes. It is a very Should interesting dagger. It's about, oh, 14 inches to 16 inches long. Uh, has a slightly curved blade. But as you're looking at it, you see this little switch just behind the hand guard. And when you press it, this viscous fluid coats the blade. Oh, oh this is the coolest thing. Check it out. I say to whoever's very close to me. That's very, it's very nice to gross. Uh, that it, liquid definitely looks poisonous. It it <sighs> is. Um, it was very rudely introduced to my bloodstream, and I did not enjoy it. I, I I want to take this moment on your new discovery. I want to take this moment to say this is one of my pet peeves, and it has been a pet peeve of mine with Wizard of the Coast for a long time. It is a dagger of venom that poisons you. <laughs> How the f <laughs> So I just want to say, oh, there are very no. few things that trip my trigger <laughs> to no. irritation. No, venomous versus poisonous definitely gets my goat too. Yeah. So I'm I, with you there. I, I, I think Wizards of the Coast is those people who fall into the camp who see a very venomous snake and go, don't touch, watch out, it's poisonous. Like, are you going to bite Graham, it? Graham, a poisonous <laughs> snake. <laughs> that's a that's a thesaurus.com oh. thing, I think. I, I'm pretty sure it's a... If it bites you and you yeah. die, it's venomous. If, <laughs> if you bite it and you die, it was poisonous. If it in bites fairness, you and it dies, it's voodoo. <laughs> in fairness, if you bite... A venomous state, <laughs> a venomous snake. It will probably kill you. Yeah. Is is it poisonous because you die? <laughs> actually, you actually, that is not accurate because I a lot. Say... 
most venoms, if you eat them, they will be broken down and will not harm yep. you. Uh -huh. yeah. No, I'm joking that you bite the snake because <laughs> yeah. you bit the snake. It bites you. Technically, yeah. Technically it's a yeah. gray area. <laughs> you okay. did Dicaros. die because you bit it. Dicaros, you now possess a dagger of venom. If you need the specs Amazing. on it, I can send them. Or you can just look it up on uh, DIN yeah. DBR. Dagger of venom is very cool. I'll I find it. rolled an investigation of 18, by the way. Uh, no, you do not find any levers or switches in this room. Um, uh, I will go ahead and head towards the door and just kind of uh, see at least what orientation it is. Is it a sliding door or is it like a lifting door? Uh, it, it actually, it's got a very, very fine seam down the center so that when it's closed, you almost cannot see it. Mm-hmm. And so apparently it looks like it will either open inward or outward. It's hard to tell from where it is on the wall. But this beam that lies across it would stop it from opening. So it's got like little hooks that it's set down into. Oh, I'll just, I'll just be like, I don't know how heavy this beam is, but I think we could remove this. And the door should swing open at the seams. Since this looks sealed from this side, it can be assumed that Prime isn't going on a circular route. Do we no. want to go back and retrieve him? Yes. Sure I think I can fine. probably lift this, if not by myself, then with Proto's help. So let's go. Let's go get our brother. Um, can I also pick over bodies, Tam? But I'm, I'm looking for specifically any containers they might have. Okay, uh, give me an investigation check. All right. It's not well, my I best. look through and see what they might be carrying. Not my best, but I'll try. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. What is it? Uh, Go ahead. That, that is a 16. All right. Uh, investigating about them, once you kind of start checking over the, the body of this horned creature, his hair is actually combed over one of those circlets. Ah. Uh -huh. And it's kind of uh -oh. shaped a little bit to go around his horns, so it won't fit uh, a non-horned person very well. I'll, I'll call there. Tikaros over. Um, Tikaros, I think this could fit you. And ah. he uh, tosses her the circlet. Let's see. I'm just looking to see if any of the others would have. Um, they both, uh, the goblin creatures had spears. They have hand crossbows. And there's a few bolts for their hand crossbows. Fair enough. Um, while that's happening, while you're looking mm -hmm. that up, um, okay. Adrastos kind of feels like he doesn't need to blend in anymore. So he's going <clears> to <throat> take the leash off his neck, roll it up, and then he's going to go to Proto and retrieve his big heavy shield and his javelin again. Okay. Gladly gives those over. I will look at uh, Holy and turn around and say, I'm sorry, I don't have any more healing. It's fine. I'm not that hurt. Stay behind me. I do have a question. Yes. Is this, are these some of the experiments that you would have, you would assume? So let me check with the DM first. I'm assuming that's a tiefling. Uh, yes, that's a tiefling. Correct. Um, so the, no, this one right here is a tiefling. They are well known in these parts. Um, the other two are most definitely experiments. What Meaning the large gentleman. No, those are the two things. There's two that resemble one, so I count them as one for the analysis and answering of your question. But these are, yes, both of these are creations, experiments. I was more concerned about that one, the, the horned one. But... Oh, no, tieflings are they're quite plentiful. But they are also free. You cannot have one. Not necessarily that I would want one, per se, but they are foreign to me. Ah, many of you will be foreign to many here. We should go get your brother. Whose brother yes. is it, exactly? All of ours, Alice. technically. Uh, Adrastos will hold up his um, 
golden wrapped hand and he'll say in the culture of where we're from my people specifically the leonin can take members of other races to be part of their family if they face a great battle together all of these people are part of my clan the dawnbringer clan so all of them are my brothers and sisters but if you bring them into your family are you not their father no Interesting dynamic. Let us go get your brother. We will have to fight that lady. We would. And hopefully, mm-hmm. at least the I don't numbers s- are on. I Sweet. don't smile at hitting a woman. But perhaps she'll give me a reason. Whatever she was doing in there seemed reason enough, but let's make sure. Indeed. Uh, I'm going to uh, walk along the the rock bridge that that uh, I revealed before, and uh, okay. head back towards the other direction. All right, Cam. Can you give me that name one more time? Which name? Sorry, the name they said in the the deep speech. Zoriat. X O R I A T. Um, I will follow, but once nobody else is near the bridge, I will say, in deep speech. Zoriat, are you here? There is no immediate response. All right. I'm going to just follow Ptolemaeus. I'm going to stay close behind him. Give me just a moment. I have to make a note. Now you've done it, Proto. But like that, no, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, we need to get the fuck out of here, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I will turn as you guys pass and say, Zoriat was not a thing in the water. Good to know. Hmm. Careful going, going forward, Ptolemaeus. I think that that gentleman sleeping in the alcove may have been awoken by our um, rather expressive combat. Um, don't worry about that. I can only go back downwards, not, not left and right at this point. I will wait for every <laughs> other to pass over the bridge, and then I will go. Uh, where is your token? I, w- I will try to drag I, it. I, oh, okay. I held it, okay. and then it just went and slid all the way down, and I am not <laughs> touching it from there. <laughs> all right. Ptolemaeus, should I, should I go first? I, I can take the hits for you, at least. Sure. All right. I will come around the corner. Right. And that door is still open, by the way. Nobody closed it earlier, so. And I will drag Ptolemaeus down there. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are so very welcome, sir. So uh, I do um, not see any movement. Uh, so I will cross over the bridge as well. Uh, funny enough, when I get to the other side of the bridge, I will, I will smack myself in the head and go, it's a place. <laughs> and then I'll just keep walking. <laughs> Um, as I come around the corner and don't see movement, I will whisper to Tolemaeus, I don't, perhaps he's not awake. Maybe it's some sort of thing like what happened to you with the crystal that he is, I hesitate to say, deactivated, but perhaps it's put him into a state of unconsciousness. <sighs> Either way, we should move with in care. That, in that way, I, do you see these prisoners? I feel like the gems on those cells were, are doing the same thing that they were meant to do for us. And the circlets might be the things that potentially stop that from happening. Hmm. Well, may I ask, give me a perception check, please? Okay. Do do do. Perception. Oh, that's a nat 20. I didn't even have to check my. <laughs> <laughs> um, you notice that there are two less of the prisoners. Speaking of which, some are missing. They may have been taken to that sacrificial altar. Not just the altar, there was a torture chamber. We need to, to serve hurry. This tentacled one, slithering lord, whatever he was called. We need to hurry. Agreed. 
I will follow behind, but I will uh, and mention it. All right. I will move with haste. Okay. Same. So you can move as far as the door that you went through that led to where the uh, demon creature was earlier, if you would like. So here? Because you would not be, uh, yeah, right where I'm pinging him. Okay. I'm going to try and get the map here updated as well. As we move over there, at the site of the crumpled over bloody mess that we left there, I will, uh, if one, is it still there? It has been moved. It is no longer there. Ah. I will look down, see it's going to go, ah, either someone moved it or a creature had a fine snack. <laughs> Seeing as the though former. how they, no, they moved, they already moved two prisoners. They've gone past this way. It's surprising that we didn't actually get visitors behind us. They probably assume we were already dead. We should prove them wrong. We should. I like your thinking, Proto. Uh, yeah, I will, I will follow along. You mind if I take my shield back, Proto? It is yours. I think I'll And I pass it back it. to you. Um, so before I go in, I'm going to come down to the group. How should we proceed? I'm... I believe that we have... We... Caution is... Of course, needed, but subtlety is not. They've already found our handiwork here, and we've done a lot more on the other side. Very well. I know that all of you are skilled at range. I think, Proto, you and I could hold them. I believe that I can, and as I say that, I will hold my shield in front of me. You'll just hear the clicking of certain gears and just, and you'll just see a silvery sheen kind of flow over me as I cast Shield of Faith. Very well. Which will bring my AC up to a 22. Awesome. All right. Um, Then I will enter the room. All right. Uh, Everybody else going in after him, or what's our order going to be here? I will proceed in um, directly behind him, but I will step forward, um, just run in a little past him so people can come file in behind me. All right. I'd be okay to go in next. Yeah. Um, as I, I will get a little, uh, I'll get up next to Proto and I will uh, say, Proto, in my clan, there is a fighting style we use where we lock shields one next to the other. We can create a shield wall and protect the ones behind us. Will you do this with me? Mine is adhered to my arm. I will have to stand on the one side. That's all right. And I put my shield forward um, and connect it and say, all right, bring your shield forward as well. And so I will, you know, clink mine right into uh, position. Okay. okay. And I'll just put, I'll just lay my spear on top of that wall and give him a nod. Uh, at mm. seeing that, I will put my warhammer on the top. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just give him another nod with a big smile, like, yep, you got it, man. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing some rolls to update what would have changed since you were doing all this other stuff, so I think I've got us up to date now. So, Okay. Uh, Sorry about I'm the delay there. perfectly fine with being behind everybody this time, so I'll, I'll just follow behind Vara and Tigros. Okay. Um, much- Let me get where I can move your token here. All right. Does that look about right to everybody? Yep. Looks good to me. Yeah. All right. As you enter back in the room, the uh, the the winged young woman <laughs> is sitting sideways in her chair, and she's kind of looking over at the corner at this uh, whatever's happening on that side. You you hear the cutting and slicing that's going on. Um, There are no cries of pain or anything, however, but you definitely hear that sloshy, knifey sound. And she's just sitting here, you know, rapt attention as you make your way into the room. They're just making dinner. We can just walk through. (laughs) 
Yeah. Cautious. I will look over at um Adrastos or a Q. I we cautiously advance. The ones behind mm -hmm. us safe. Do not make oh. the first aggressive movement. You're back. Oh, you've been making a lot of trouble. It's what we do, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm just rather Kip's curious. Cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rather curious what it is you, you think that you're actually doing here. To be completely honest, trying to find our way out. Hmm. And find our brother. And You're... I'll look at <laughs> Adrastos again. And Adrastos just nods and find our brother. Your, your brother. An anvil rot by the name of Prime. Anvil rot. Would that be someone who was wearing, like, head-to-toe armor? Kind of a warforged, but with no wood. I suppose he would appear that way to your eyes, yes. Oh, well, he's gone. Gone where? Gone. He was given he was given to uh to Zoriat. Well we'd like him back. Um so <laughs> We go speak oh. with that person. <laughs> well, I don't know that you can get him back, but uh, we could definitely send you to him. Uh, we do not want to go to Zoriat. Hmm. And I will say really loud in deep speech, and we're not all made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to raise her hand and just kind of make a gesture with it. And, uh, Proto. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. That will be a 24. All right. Hey. You feel as though something is trying to creep in on your mind, but it's not able to take control. I will just say, my memory engrams are beyond you. Oh. And I'll look to Proto and say, I'd say that counts as the first aggressive action, wouldn't you? I feel aggressed. <laughs> Let's commit <laughs> violence, friend. <laughs> I feel aggressed. You gotta love that. All right. Let's roll initiative. As that is happening, I will just kind of shout across, be like, Let's try to keep this one alive for questioning. I got a 19. <laughs> oh, let me get the. I'm sorry. It would have been distracted. a nat 20, but I have that minus one. Okay, I think we got most people coming up in there. I rolled a freaking natural four, man. I was so happy last combat when I got that 23. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, addressed us. Don't worry about it. I also rolled a net one. Uh, that's that's a three though, so I'm still you know a little bit, but but it's still. So who am I missing here? Uh, mine because I can't. I, that's right. I haven't been able to. But uh, yeah, to be the slow fighter. And what was yours, Ptolemy's? Four. Three. Three. All right. It's fine. Doesn't bother me. Bothers All me. right. <laughs> um, well, I guess I guess it's time for violence. And Proto, you're up. And I feel like right shit because I'm locked shields with uh, <laughs> with my buddy, and he's not <laughs> moving. So I'm holding my action for him <laughs> because we're the wall. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yeah. I rolled well and I couldn't use I'm it. I'm sorry, Proto. <laughs> mm. I appreciate the role play, but so, I'm sorry. So funny. All right. In that case, Vara. All righty. 
Let's see. Um, what'll do the most damage? It's always my question. I think I'll go ahead and do um, just a guiding bolt. I'll do it at third level. That's oh. a... My screen just... I don't know. No! 14 to hit? Um... No! <laughs> Please! That is a miss. Lost. Yeah, okay. I'm having trouble. Edge decided to load up a screen and... I'm trying to clear that. Okay. Sorry, the map got disrupted for a moment. <laughs> You're good. And then I'll just move up a little closer. And that's it for me. Just idle okay, curiosity. This is getting When's old. the last time we slept? It's been a hot minute. So or, long ago. I'm, I'm pretty we sure that we, Yeah. Most likely, we, we keep going like this. It's not the level 8 that we're, th we're scared of. It's the exhaustion that we're scared of. <laughs> Uh, we probably look and smell like shit too. We've been spelunking through a goblin absolutely. cave. We've been through hell. Yeah. 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 Yep. Except me, I've been press doing every once in a while. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I woke up from a nap. I'm fine. You're in the you're in the middle of a dungeon, and you know there's more to go. So what are you worried about? It, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh man. So are we up to Tikaros? Oh, cool. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hell a firebolt at this crazy demon lady. Yes, I do. Natural 19 plus 7. Does that hit? That yeah. hits. Absolutely. Not... Oh, yeah. Take some fire damage, lady. Yeah. It's a great big 14 <laughs> points of fire damage to her face. All right. Fire! Good thing demons are susceptible to fire, notoriously. Notoriously. Oh, totally. Tikaros knows yes, that. The, I was like, just about to say the fire The fire hits her, and while you see a little bit of burn and singeing, most of it seems to just dissipate, and she almost seems to like it. Oh, that's right. I remember this. Curses. This is my turn. All right. Having uh, accepted this, uh, this pain into her body, she's going to... Uh, Say in deep speech, some assistance in here, please. And I let the group know she just asked for help. <laughs> so from around the corner, two more of those. Uh, oh, hell no. Ugly goblin creatures. And one more of the. Uh, Cultists in the uh, brown robe is going to appear. I think it's literally hell yes, unfortunately. <laughs> <sighs> and let's see, how far away are you, Tikaros, since you're the one who cast that? I'm so far away. Not far <laughs> enough, however. Um, I need a... If a uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw. Coming right up. It's a 12. You suddenly hear this voice inside your head that says, you, you really shouldn't do things like that. In fact, I think you should just come over here and sit down next to me. Oh, it's a succubus. And you will walk over and sit down. I want to sit next to you. You're so pretty. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, don't forget my aura. Oh, yeah. that would have... I forgot. So 12 plus, plus four. 4? What's the uh, distance on your 16? aura? Yeah, how, how close is she? It's 10 feet. I was. Yeah, she yeah. would have been within 10 feet. It would have been okay. So yeah. it's a 16 then. Does it do it? You do not have to walk over and sit next yeah! to him. Nice. Oh, let's keep him. Let's keep him. 
do do you do you still say the oh you're beautiful? <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, I was like, is she beautiful to your kind? Mm, I think I'm prettier. To be fair, <laughs> you while you're having are. while you are having this discussion, <laughs> the two uh, half or double go- I almost said half goblin, but they're not. They're double goblin creatures. Double goblins are going to uh, aim, their, <laughs> aim their crossbows at uh, Adrastos and Proto, the closest. Got my shield this time. And Adrastos, that is going to be an absolute miss. There's no way that could possibly hit. And that is a 16 for Proto, and I believe that is an absolute miss also. I'm currently at a 22. Okay. And I think that is going to be it. For them at the moment. Irax, you're up. I certainly am. Um, all right. You know what? Uh I doubt I can do much to the succubus with I don't remember if they how they react to non-magical weapons. I really don't. But uh honestly, I'm feeling like she's an unknown quantity, and I've at least fought these guys before, so uh he's gonna start throwing javelins at these guys coming down the hall and try and take out some of the reinforcements. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the weird double goblin on the left. Uh, well, so you don't know javelin. if he's weird. He might be absolutely normal for a double goblin. Javelin <laughs> time. That was a, let's see, 16 plus 6 is 22 to hit. Uh, that's an with, absolute hit, yes. Uh, um, unfortunately, minimum damage, so that's uh, four piercing damage. All right. Um, and then he's going to throw a second one at orange here. Okay. Thanks for color coding them. You're very welcome. I should remember to do that when I'm setting up the thing, just so it's done. That is a dirty <laughs> 20 to hit with uh, eight piercing damage. Wow, all right. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then lastly, with his bonus action attack as a dread ambusher, he's going to throw at the robed individual there. All right. With this time a 23 to hit. And let me get my D8 in there as well. Very nice. Uh, that is... 16 piercing damage. Wow. All right. On Mr. Brown Robes. And then I'm actually going to back up a little bit because I don't like I don't like what's happening here and I think I'm more effective from a further distance really. Um to adjust the map a little here. So let's see. I know I get some extra movement speed. 10 additional feet of movement. So I'm going to back up about, I can easily back up an extra, uh, hold on. I'm not going to back up too far. I'll just go back probably here. Um, <clears throat> and that's going to be my turn. All right. Seeing what he just did, how 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 are the people in the back looking? Uh, the guy in the brown robes uh, looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. Uh, the other two, mm, not. I mean, a double goblin. Yeah, how familiar so are you with them? But they don't. They they definitely have taken some damage. It's visible. Okay. I will offset myself just slightly to the centers uh, away from Hyrax and uh, draw out two more my Eldritch Blasts. First one is going to smack right into that brown roped guy first. Kind of want to take out the reinforcement. So I'm just going to line it straight through the center of uh, of everybody. Kind of right over the shield and whatnot. Okay. But uh, that is a... 
18 to hit, I believe. That's a hit. Cool. Um, that is unfortunately one point of damage. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> it's very, very sad. Very, very sad. But the strong next, hit, the next weak one... damage. Yep. Whatever. It's okay. Uh, I have another one. It's a uh, 23 to hit. That's a hit. So stronger hit, a bit stronger damage. That is seven points of damage. And who is this against? I'm sorry. Uh, brown rope guy. Brown rope. Okay, oh, you oh. hit brown rope again. That's where I was lost. Um, he crumples to the ground. Okay, awesome. Uh, with that, that'll be the end of my turn for now. All right, Adrastos. All right, <clears throat> I will um turn to Proto and. I have gone, like, full Leonin military. And I'll say, Proto, break shield wall. Attack the succubus. <laughs> and I'll push out the shield wall and run in. Um, to here. And... Does that trigger your health action? Because if it does, I want you to go ahead and go first, Proto. Yeah, no, I, I, that would definitely trigger my, okay. uh, my so, health action. I will allow you to go ahead and go hey uh being told to rush in and hit the succubus um turns out i'm gonna rush in and hit the succubus <laughs> um <laughs> so going there i will swing the first one i'm gonna assume that a 12 does not hit i uh, know the body inspiration is still on by the way it's still there uh yeah i'm saving that for a uh save uh okay. <laughs> sounds good um does a 25 hit yes Ooh. okay um so let me roll damage on that first that'd be seven plus so that's going to be uh 11 damage okay and then because i'm just a happy happy guy what, what kind of damage is that by the way that is bang bang damage legendary um, damage all right bang bang damage Bang, bang, damn. Listen, I'm very specific. And then I will expend a second level spell slot um, for 3d8 radiant, okay. which will be eight, six. So we're at 14. Oh, well, that sucks. Okay. So that's going to be 20 radiant okay. damage. All right. And I will smack her with that. And I will just get back into a position where I'm, again, putting my hammer on top of my <laughs> shield. <laughs> and then at that point, I guess, uh, Drostus, it's you. Yes. Um, so I will stab with my, um, my offhand javelin. Um, 24? Hit. For 7 damage. All right. Second attack. Math. 23. <laughs> All right. That's a hit. For 10 damage. All right. And then it's probably not going to work, but I'm going to lock shields again with Proto. Um, and I'm going to just growl out, run, and use Daunting Roar as my bonus right. action. Very good. All right. So she needs to make a wisdom Already save. did. Already did. Okay. She failed. <laughs> okay. So she is frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Yep. Proto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. What would you like? Uh, you had a held action from yeah, the previous I took it. Uh, I, I will. I. So it's your turn again. Locks, <laughs> it's your turn again. Oh, fu I completely <laughs> forgot about that. I'm, I'm not used. To, I'm not supposed to be this fast. I many many metal handle it. Um, again, I will. Um, since we're we're locked, I'm going to take again two hits over the top. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to assume a 25 hits. Yes. And a 14 does not. Correct. Perfect. 
Okay, it's going to be three. Oh, well, that's that's good. Good stuff. Three. So uh, six damage. All right. Again, I will expend a level two spell slot. Okay. Uh, once I find my spells to exp uh, actually, I'm going to leave it like that because it's not going to matter in a minute. And we're going to have a two, ten, fifteen radiant damage. All right. As a, uh, I think I still get my bonus action, correct? Sure. So I'm going to, since my hammer is my, my holy uh, symbol, I will hold it and say, please give me the strength to protect those that are under my charge and behind my shield. And uh, I will expend one of my, my divinity to refuel and recover a level two spell slot. Nice. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Anything else? No, I'm just still shield walled with uh, Drosis and uh, ready to whoop some more ass. All right. Vara. Ready. Um, bonus action Wild Shape Starryform Archer. Okay. Or, well, that's an action. It's the Wild Shape. So I'll go ahead and Wild Shape this turn. Um, I just kind of look more starry, like almost transparent ish in a way. And um, I will go ahead and use the bonus action of that form and hurl a luminous arrow at a creature 60 feet. All right. Let's see. That'll be 14 again to hit. I know it doesn't <laughs> on the succubi. Yep. And that's my turn. <laughs> so right. Bara, Bara just continues to shoot these little radiant blasts, which she keeps missing. And she's like, damn it, there's, there's too many people. Everyone move. <laughs> Pam, I hate to bother you. Is she yes. a fiend or undead? Uh, she is a fiend. I get, uh, when I use the uh, Divine Smite, I get an extra D8 against her. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Ah, yes. I don't know if that, but I don't know if you want me to roll it or just use it next time. It's up to you. Let, let's do it next. You can go ahead. Uh, let's do it next time. Tika Rose. Oh, I'm going to look over at Vara and say, God, oh, that's beautiful. You have to show me how to do that sometime. Yeah. And <laughs> don't worry about it. I've been missing a lot too. Let's see how this goes. Uh, Hurling a firebolt at one of the goblins, the green goblin up the ways. The green goblin. Norman? <laughs> the green goblin. <laughs> 18 to hit with the fireball. Ooh, you, need, you need a web spell for that. Yes, you hit. <laughs> Norman's on sabbatical, hun. <laughs> 11 oh, points of fire damage. Uh, 11. He, he is crisp and burnt and deceased. Woo! Yes. I'm gonna just stay here and wink at Vara. <laughs> All right. I think I think maybe I'll start helping you from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So the uh, the succubus, as you have all named her now, uh, looks and says, yells out, Varash Tal, and then disappears. That was. I thought she was saying my name for a minute, almost shit my pants. Right. <laughs> was she saying something in deep speech, or was that just a, uh, something she said? Because I don't know if that means anything special. Um, it sounded like a name. Oh, man, that's not good. Mm. Oh, Agrius. The uh, goblin, the surviving uh, double goblin, um, pulls out another crossbow takes the crossbow from his associate and now has three crossbows. <laughs> and he is going to fire them. Uh, two at Adrastos, one at Proto. I've seen this movie. How does he reload all the damn things? Well, he's got, he? one, he's feet, got another arm. <laughs> well, but just one arm. <laughs> well, the other two were lo the other one was loaded. Yeah, fair load, enough. Fire load. He, he gets to do this. He can load on it. Uh, anyway, the two and two tell me that the first two to Adrastos fail miserably. Mm -hmm. 
So no problem on that one whatsoever. Um, the 23 on the one towards Proto, does that hit? Yes, that'll hit. Okay, this is, this is going to hurt because it is just a hand crossbow. So that is an amazing seven points of piercing damage. Yes, I'm sure you are in agony at this point. I give up. That is 10%. <laughs> That is 10% of your health. Oh my god. Not even. It's a little less. It's a little less. <laughs> wow. And uh, Goblin Guy is going to move forward. And um, Adrastos, I need a wisdom saving throw, please. Right. You do get a plus four. Okay. Well, with the plus four. That makes my wisdom save a plus four, and it will be 17. Wow. That oh. is good enough. <laughs> when he said it'll be a plus four. I'm like, I know. I was like, wait a zero. minute. Did, did I actually get one of them? Okay. All right. Hyrax, you're up. Okay. So I see pretty much just one of these. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Fucked up goblins left. Pardon my French. I'm going to throw a javelin at him because that's what I'm good at. I'm a javelin thrower. Um, throw the javelin, javelin thrower. It's uh, 24 to hit with eight piercing damage. All right, that's a hit and damage. Wonderful, I feel fulfilled. Uh, that's my turn. All right, Ptolemaeus. Uh, I will throw my Eldritch Blast because I'm an Eldritch Blast thrower. Um, <laughs> so we will continue on the, the, the routine and, uh, that is a 15 to hit on the first one. Uh, that is a hit. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I like that. That is three points of damage. <clears throat> uh, he's still up. Another one. We're just going to throw up. another one. That is a dirty 20. That's a hit. That looks a lot better. That is a nine point points of damage. And he only had one uh, HP left, so he's dead. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> so just I will s will say to the group. Uh, believe she called for someone. Haste may be our friend. Let's go. Uh, is there still Wait. a guy at the table? I was about to say before. Wait, is that dude just chilling? That no, that's true. Is he hasn't moved. Leave him be. I mean, he's fine. He's doing his thing. I guess. Okay, just, if we look at him, what's he doing? That's the one who's looked, been trying to he, control your minds. Oh. He looks at us, shrugs, oh. and says, it's 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll interest you in a watch. <laughs> okay, yeah. Then, then, what are you then. buying? <laughs> So, um, Adrastos. All right, yeah, I'll go have a word with this gentleman. Go bonk. And as I'm running over, I will yell to the others, Find the succubus! She's invisible! And stab. What? <laughs> I'm just going to make this easy. <laughs> you, you finish him off. Let's, let's, let's finish okay. with this room. <laughs> Damn, I tried to find an invisible succubus. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... Don't that's, we all? That's, <laughs> <laughs> um he's just saying that so they don't get complacent <laughs> um tam um since he said find the succubus i'm gonna take a moment uh and detect good and evil um i can sense anything affected uh basically within um what is it 60 feet is she within 60 feet of us or is more within or is there anything evil within 60 feet of us yes and yes alive <clears throat> Yes and yes. Uh, I will let you all know. Uh, I sense evil nearby. It's um, how much am I sensing? I mean, it's <laughs> am I sensing we're dead or am I sensing so we're fucked or we're going to be fine? You said 60 feet, right? Let me see where yeah. you're at. Oh, not too yeah, bad. I, 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 I mean, know. I know the here it is. I know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet. That is not behind total cover. Yep. Give me just a second. I want to check on this one here. 
Because if you show me where she is from that, I'm going to go bonk. Um, you get, you get the feeling of, uh, a little bit of evil about, uh, 25 feet to the north. You get a feeling of a little bit more evil about 35 feet to the northwest. To the northwest. Okay, so that's we see this turns east, not west. So I'm sorry, I meant east. I apologize. My bad. Uh, okay. Um, I can't okay. read a I can't read a compass. I'm I'm just an idiot. No, so I can, but anyway. It does say I know the location. So is she uh up north there? You yes, yes. I, I pinged. So I don't know if you can oh, see. Oh, I the didn't ping, see the though. ping. I'm sorry. I didn't see the ping. I'll ping it again. So sorry to be the guy again. But it's, if he's if she's beyond the wall, it's technically total cover. So you oh yeah, that is total cover. Fact. No, you're right. Well, he said 25, which uh, to the north, which yeah. I, I counted up. So I assumed it was directly above. So I would just know that. Um, I would I'm tell you all. It, I'm giving it to you as DM fiat anyway. I want you to know where they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so ahead of say, us, we just go forward. So <laughs> I will. All I will call out then is. I, Looking at the I'll, clock on the wall, I'm letting you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to move right in front of her. I'm going to say, follow me. I'm assuming, I'm hoping people would follow me. Oh, absolutely. Totally. Uh, so we're ready immediately. Um, yeah, I'm fighting considering 20, she's, so. Considering she's still technically invisible, but I know where she is, I'm going to be like, I think she's around, and I will swing directly on her. <laughs> Okay, I'm fixing. I'm fixing so you can see. So my okay. apologies, but you know, roll twenty is just not so, the best friend sometimes. First roll is stay behind you. Does a nineteen hit her? Uh, give me just a second. How much did you move in that time? What's your movement? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, so yes, a 19 would hit. Okay, let me roll my second. All right, well, 20, a 22 will hit. Okay. So mm -hmm. Let me roll. It's going to be... I am going to expend for smites, by the way. But I need a moment here. Um, so the initial damage is going to be 5. Okay, 5 and 7. That's 12. Let me roll the two fours. Fifteen. Okay, it's not bad. That's eighteen bludgeoning. I'm going to expend a level one spell slot, uh, which will be three dice because um, she's undead. So that'll be seven, thirteen, sixteen from the first one. The next one's going to be uh, a second level spell slot, so that'll be four. Okay. That's going to be six. Oh, that sucks. Ten. Eighteen. Okay, that's uh, 23 radiant on that next one. Okay. And then as my bonus action, I will again say a small prayer, holding my hammer to give myself back a second level spell slot. All right. Your first hit definitely impacts you hear it. The second hit goes forward, and it's almost like there was something that blocked it and begins to disperse it into the walls, which crack and crumble from the force of it. She's still obviously being hurt by it, but a good portion of that damage is not actually impacting her. And I will call out, um, since I can see, uh, it looks like, is that a dude in a cat mask? Something like that. So I will call out that uh, Miraculous's yeah. partners up here. Um, <laughs> I, I will let them know. Um, we found her. And there's a cat guy. <laughs> I've been here the whole time, Proto. <laughs> <laughs> two! Two cat guys! There's two cat guys. 
Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold our <laughs> <back>, guys. <laughs> My oh, that was too good. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's uh, that was the run up. All right, I guess we're back around to Vara at this point. Where is Vara? Oh, she's way down. You guys are way down there. Have you caught up, or are you guys staying down there around the corner? I would, I would say we have caught up. Okay. Um, I would be like maybe here. Wait, still trying to down the succubus, right? We can see her now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect. And the cat guy. And the cat guy. And the cat guy. Right. Um, lovely. I would still be in my starry form of Archer. So I'll go ahead and do that first at her. Hopefully I hit. 20! Hey. That is a hit. Not a crit, hey. just a regular. But yeah, hit. Okay, cool. So that'll do five damage. <laughs> She's dead. Hell yeah! I mean, she she was she was she was pretty beat to pieces by Proto to begin with. So. Nice. <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't far to go. So cool. And then after um after doing that, I'll kind of step forward a bit and look at this cat man, and basically go. Hey, we have a lot of questions, um, and like, we've killed everyone we've encountered. Do? So, would love to just chat. <laughs> that's where that's what she'll say. All right, and she'll kind of use that. I guess that would be her action. Okay, Tikaros. I feel like I was being quite cautious, so technically, I'm going to use my action and movement to dash to catch up with everyone at this point okay. and then round the corner and just take it all in i think just the dead succubus on the ground and whatever this thing is coming at us now all so right. that's that's it for me cool 